Press Start Podcast. And welcome back to the Press Start Podcast. I'm your host, Vic, a.k.a. Mr. Never Chillin'. This, this is episode number 92, and I'm joined by Scott, a.k.a. Scopey One. Hey, everyone. Welcome back. And uh, we're also joined by my other co-host, Lunatic Oblivion. Hey, guys. How are you doing today? What's happening, guys? Man, it's been a... I think a pretty crazy week in gaming, and I'm excited to uh, dive into all of the news that we got going on. But before we get to there, of course, we got our uh, games played, and looks like I took the lead here with uh, the most games played this week. <laughs> so I mean, just sitting here playing the Switch Extended Library, like, yeah, I played a lot. Yeah, no, I did. I actually did. I can't wait to really talk about it for sure. But I just want to kick it off with. Uh, I know we ended last week's segment of this talking about tears we're going to kick it off with tears of the kingdom and roger how's your playthrough been long <laughs> fun and long dude i just the game has so much to offer and it feels like none of it you know really gets old I, i'm sitting here i'm like okay you know i got this high mountain here and i'm like yeah feel like let's go this this fucking looks <sighs> It looks great. I'm excited to get up to the top of the mountain. I'm excited to see, and then I'm doing more stuff, and I'm like, wow, and two hours have passed. Where did they go? <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely hear you. I've been watching a bunch of people talk about it on their, online. They're like, man, I got 30 hours invested in the game, and I'm like 5% done with the story, and they're like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, there's just so much stuff You're that insane. you can do in the game. <laughs> so, uh, Scott, how has your playthrough been? Have you been playing it I, at all? I, uh, I've beaten one temple. I've done it accidentally with like little to zero cold gear and like almost no food, anything like that. But um, yeah, I'm <laughs> I am I am task saturated, and what I mean by that is um, I'm not doing any of the real quests. I have been just walking, gliding, coasting my happy ass um, from tower to tower, and I have been I did the the geoglyph quest. If anybody has done that yet. Uh, and then what I did is I made it a point to actually go through and find all of the geoglyphs and find the tiers uh, so I could actually get numbers 1 through 18 on the story reel because that's like my favorite thing is like this this story has become really really fantastic um, just by catching certain pieces of it and you are yes very new mustache <laughs> uh, yes, Disney. Very, very new mustache. I'm working on it, but uh, I've I've made it that point because I I want to know more of the story, and I'm not doing the main quests to do so. I've been working on maxing stamina, gliding, and just making things. So I've I've just like I'll go from one tower, I'll see a tier, and I'm like, well, there, but there's a tower over there. I'm I should get that. I should get that first. And then, you know, sometimes you have to do a task to get a tower, unlock it. And I've unlocked everything, and the only temple I've done was the first temple that you get led to. And I haven't done anything else since, just because I've been exploring so much. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Honestly, it, you finish one, and you're like, oh, there's another one off in the distance. So you go to it, and then you're like, oh, there's another one. Let me but go then, do that one. Yeah, and, and, but you get up there, and you're like, well, wait, hold on. Here's a Sky Archipelago. What's there? Oh, okay, this is another shrine? Okay, cool. Oh, wait, I gotta go down there? Okay, yeah, I'll go down there. But wait. No, I'm right over top of that tower, so I'm gonna get that tower now. <laughs> and then and it's then, just, like, it's, it's ADD, it's ADD yeah. the game. And then you finish your task, and you look down, and you see a little Korok, and you're like, fuck! Alright, <laughs> where, where is, where's your buddy? Where is like, he? I, like, I'm not All doing right, that. Fine. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> I just start marking him and I'm like, I'll be back later, okay? <laughs> I think the longest, the longest task I've given myself was, like, if you stop at the pony stables, you get your pony points now, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I got my pony, check him in, me and, me and Pony Danza are just going around Hyrule, and, uh, I got the points for the Melania bed, and then you get visited by the horse god. They tell you to go somewhere. So I had to go all the way up to like the south of Calla Stables and then walk my happy ass all the way up to the ponds there. Well, that's a fairy. So I had to go get an Endura carrot. So I had to Kakariko, Kakariko do that little side quest, get my Endura carrot, go back. And it, it's just been, it's been crazy. I'm like, oh, well, there's a tower along the way. There's a shrine along the way. And it's, it'll take you, you know, five hours you to do that one. What you're doing. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. I'm like, what was I doing here? Why, what, like, where did I start this? Like, yeah. What, what did I do here? Um, but it it has made the game so fun and so enjoyable mm -hmm. um, that it is it is no surprise uh, everything we've been seeing and hearing about it. Not to mention, like, just the build feature has been absolutely outstanding. Uh, 
I feel really, really smart, and then 10 minutes later, I feel really, really dumb. Because I'm like, oh yeah, I solved that puzzle, that was easy breezy. And then 10 minutes later, I'm like, what? Like, what am I supposed to do here? I have no idea. What did I do wrong? Where did I yeah, go like, wrong? I don't understand this, this doesn't make sense. And then, like, you sit there and you look at it for a minute, and uh, you're like, oh wait, yeah, yeah, I'll do this. And then it just solves, you solve the puzzle, you're like, man, I'm, I'm brilliant, I'm a genius. But man, the game has been so good. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, that's that's great to hear. I'll eventually uh, check out Tears of the Kingdom one day. I got to get through Breath of the Wild before I can do that. But uh, oh man, remove Breath of the Wild from his list, and he's like, "I'll get through it." Yeah, no, you won't. I I don't know if I will. Maybe maybe one day. But um, just real quick in in regards to some of the games I have been playing on my Switch, um, playing Pokemon Stadium. I folded. I finally got Nintendo Switch Online. Um, and I've been really enjoying that. I played through like the first like uh, eight battles or whatever, like in the in the stadium. So I saw one the Poke Cup. I was like, man, this is like reminiscent, like nostalgia, like high right now. It, it's insane because we played the shit out of that game, and then also did some party games as well. And I fucked the computer up really quick. I was like, man, <laughs> like fuck yeah. But I, I feel like I was gonna break the switch because like how fast you're pressing the buttons or the joystick and shit like that. Like the Nintendo 64 controller was way more like built. I think for those kind of games, as opposed to the Switch, where I feel like I'm gonna break the damn Joy Cons for yeah, sure. That's why you need oh, one of these suckers right here. Get yourself I do. a pro controller, and you can beat the shit out of this. Full yeah. disclosure: I almost went out and got one of those the other day, just because, like, like I said last episode, I'm not on my original Switch where I had two sets of Joy Cons. I had one charging while one was playing, uh, and I would just swap them out. I only have one set of Joy Cons here. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna go get a pro controller. I was like, yeah. I, I have to. Like at this point, and it's just like everything. Everything feels so fragile. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> then um, next on the list. So then the other game though I played via the um, Nintendo Six or the N sixty four on the Switch with the the expansion pass was Paper Mario. This was a game that I I feel like I played like like a battle or two like back in the day. So I was like, you know what? I'm actually gonna play it because I know this is like an OG, and I'm like I'm fucking addicted to this shit already. Like I, mm-hmm. I've just beat the the Cooper brothers and I just got the first star, um, that you that you rescue and then I was like, all right, cool, I saved it and I put it down. But that was like a good like three four hours into the game already, and I know this yeah. game's gonna take about twenty mm-hmm. like twenty five hours I think, to to beat according to how long to beat dot com. So I'm really looking forward to this yeah, journey. This is this is one of those OG games that really took uh the Final Fantasy sort of genre gameplay into mm-hmm. into main stream for for the western audience because i think it took a lot longer for final fantasy to to really hook on with a lot of people who weren't into the the japanese gameplay sort of field the the paper mario was one of those one of those quintessential experiences where everything you got felt useful like you had moments where you're like well how do i get this item how do i do this unlockable how do i go here and you're like oh Yep. Three three bosses later, you're like, oh, I just use Goombet over here, and we do this. Wow, right. this is awesome. Yeah, I started it to just... notice like certain things. I'm like, how the fuck do I get to there? And I start unlocking like different abilities or different characters that have different abilities, like getting the the, the um the Goomba who can like tattletale, or and then like the bomber who yep. can blow up walls, and then uh, the the Koopa where you can just jump on it and make his shell break some or reach items that you can't reach. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. this shit just all makes sense. So, been thoroughly enjoying that. But something else that I wanted to talk about, Roger, we really enjoyed this the other night. We caught a Warzone dub, yeah. and I wasn't the one that carried us to the victory. You actually got, brought us in and clutched it up with, with the heart racing like crazy. How was the experience? I got to the top eight, and I was like, I have no shields. I've got nothing going on here. Some dude downs me when I'm coming down the hill. He stops shooting me, turns, and then just forgets I'm there. Like He, he, he knocked me, and I was like, wait, I'm not dead, bud. So he might have thought, maybe he thought the other one was your teammate and was trying to go for the team wipe but that's yeah. the dude, that's the adrenaline you no shield yeah. like almost no bullets time to shine baby yeah no it was it was a pretty crazy fight i i think i went six uh six and one in that match <laughs> it yeah was, it, it was, was definitely crazy stressful. yeah shit was what sweaty was as fuck also- it was our first game also under regular Warzone as well. Like mm-hmm. we were we were playing on freaking on the island for ever and then we we're like let's just go back to normal Warzone. Well, it's because they, they, it's it's because they, they adjusted the playlist to make it more difficult. It's like if you want to play Resurgence on Ashika, you can only play um like trios, solo quad, trios yeah, yeah solo and trios but if you want to play trios or uh, duos and quads you got to play massive resurgence tri- uh, those and I'm like why can't we just have all the goddamn playlists and let us pick however yeah. we want to play? Like you're just it's, pissing everybody off. 
it's annoying. Thankfully, I still have the resurgence solos for like the times that I actually can get on and play. But dude, getting in with people trying to do a du a duo is just go back to a Sheikah. It's 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 dog. Yeah, it's it's fucking trash. So they definitely need to fix that up. Um, but another game here on the list that I also did play on the N64, but from the N64, but this time it wasn't on the Switch. It is via Xbox because it was a free game with gold um, with the month of May, and it was the Star Wars Episode One racer. I touched on a little bit last week, but uh, I really went ham in this game lately, and I'm just been winning all the races, doing all the tournaments, unlocking all the parts, and I'm like, you know, like I really used to do this as a kid. Like this was my game. Like I mastered this game as a kid, and I feel like I picked it right back up. And I'm like, I'm fucking everybody up. Like I'm never bicycle. losing a race. I'm never going to lose. Right that bicycle absolutely that's such a good game i'm i'm super jealous when i saw this in your list yeah and i was like man he's just he's been having a blast yeah it's, it's definitely been great for sure and uh roger because do you have xbox game pass ultimate mm -hmm. or is it just uh the pc yeah. one i have ultimate yeah well you might as well download it because that comes with xbox live so you do get those two free games uh, i mm -hmm. i'm not sure do they I wonder if they work on uh pc then too i don't think they're you on will. pc but you know, like, it's, you know, I have an Xbox One, just not yeah. the newest consoles. Yeah, so I mean, it'll run perfectly fine on the Xbox One. No I big deal. Right on the N64. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, um, Scott, Redfall. How has it been playing? Is it crapping out on you some more, or what's going on? Uh, no, it's it's been playing the same as it has been playing, but um, I think I'm jaded now because it's like I'm invested. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like, I gotta go through. Uh, but it's not the game I want to play. <laughs> yeah, I you know, hear you. I, I feel like it was really bad timing, especially considering all the issues that it had, and then it got dunked on by Tears of the Kingdom. Like I, I played Redfall for maybe two or two or three hours this week, maybe, and the entire time I was thinking about Tears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's at this point, it's like you know, just to get it, just to get it under the belt, get it beaten, go through that, not to take away from how you know how fun the game is to play but it's like man mm -hmm. there's it took a week there's better games there's other games i want to play like that yeah. i'm much much more immersed in for sure yeah i finished my list this week and i went huh tears of the kingdom that was it i, was, <laughs> I spent every hour that i could on that game yeah every time I, and and I've gotten no farther in the main quest. <laughs> yeah, same. I, and everyone I talk to beats the same temple. And it's like... It's, it's the wind temple every time. Everyone's like, but, they do wind temple, and they're like, you know, I'll come back to the rest of the temples later. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel it. I, 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 so good. I noticed this is a uh, strong character characteristic of Scott. When he plays games, he doesn't play the main game, the main storyline. He just plays everything else except I, the main storyline. I just go and I explore, especially in open world games. Those are yeah, my yeah. favorite. The open world RPG, do it your damn self. Like that's that's my type of game. I love those games, uh, and this has just been top tier since since the minute you hit free roam. Uh, like the minute you hit free roam, you can you know you st if I'm rolling through like my TikTok or like I see reels and stuff like that, like oh did you know you can get this first game first thing in the game? I'm like no I did not. And Let me go do it. And, it. <laughs> and then I went and got it. Yeah. Uh, like did you know you guys can go right into Hyrule Castle? You can get your champion's leathers first thing. Yeah. Immediately and then and then the shield of Hyrule like everything like that like there's still and and I know there's still so much to explore and there's more power to get. Like have you been attacked by the hands yet of the gloom? Because yeah, that's I've killed them twice now. I I run because that's a bad fucking time. <laughs> yeah, uh, you pick up some really nasty fucking weapons. I got one that does sixty-seven damage right now and sixty-six yeah, like, damage, and I'm like, let's go. So like, uh, just, not to that's what I do, and this has been just this has fed that addiction. Right. It's so bad. Right. And I, I know we can sit here and talk about Tears of the Kingdom all oh, day yeah. long because it, 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 it's later. arguably game of the year, and we're gonna see why. But Roger, um, Coffee Talk Two. Or Coffee Talk One, I should say. Finally beaten it. <laughs> what was your experience like? You really enjoy it. Are you excited for Coffee Talk Two? I think for uh, what it is, this was an amazing game. Like I, Disney said it best last night when we beat it. She's like, I, I don't think it's a ten out of ten, but I couldn't tell you how to make it better. <laughs> like, I, I hear I, you. I that's, literally, you know, I that's hear you. Yeah, that's, that's it. What did, let me see what I gave it. I forget what I gave it because I always write it. You gave it like a, you gave like a seven, seven. Like a seven. six or seven, I think it was. Yeah, which eight is eight out of ten. I gave I, I gave it an eight out of ten. So it, oh, it was eight, it was yeah. a great game, in my yeah, opinion. And same, and like for me, I was like eight or nine out of ten. Like it was really good. They explain all the mechanics for things like 
in story. So like the fact that you sitting behind the controller, they want it to be you in the game. So like Neil, for example, breaks that wall and he says, you know, I know what you are. And you're like, oh, shit, <laughs> shit. I don't even know what I am. <laughs> and he's like, you're clearly this. And you're like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And like the ability to just load, uh, save your game, load the game, change the days, change your choices, change the drinks you give people. Like the fact that it's just so well written, in my opinion, I just I want to know what's next. Where right. does the story go from here? Because they clearly explained that they're like, I don't want to spoil right. the game. The game is from 2020, but like at the same time, I don't want to ruin it for anyone who hasn't picked up the game yet because this is really getting its acclaim because of Coffee Talk 2 coming out. Right. And I don't want to ruin Coffee Talk 1 if you haven't played it, but it is truly an amazing game. Right. If you like to just turn your brain off, like you need something to t calm down at night, something to quiet to relax to you don't want to truly read a book this is it it's a great story the soundtrack's amazing the story actually just it feels good all the characters generally you feel you feel connected to these characters yeah. their plights their stories right and you want to see them succeed right and it was crazy because like um Faya, um the, the writer who's writing like the the book or whatever Freya. Freya yeah Freya sorry um it was crazy because I could relate to her because I am a writer and I can understand where she was coming from where you have writer's block and you're like fuck like what do I do how do I write how do I get past this and then sometimes you do know you do need a change of scenery and you can get your creations from sitting at a coffee shop or going somewhere to get that and I used to do it like I used to go to parks or wherever I would try and find inspiration to be like all right cool I'm gonna sit here I'm throwing some music I'm gonna write or type whatever I was doing at the time mm -hmm. and it didn't works so yeah, that that game was definitely a lot of fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did also beat two games this week. I finished up Genesis Noir because that was a game I was playing before Star Wars came out, and then Star Wars came out. I was like, mm, that game just hit the back back burner because it just it just couldn't take it away. But Genesis Noir, dude, like you got to check this game out. You have Game Pass, Scott. You have Game Pass. Really fun game. This oh, game is man, really yeah. it's really fucking trippy, but it really takes you from like basically the premise of the story is like you watch how the Big Bang happens, and then like they're theorizing like how the Big Bang is going to retract on itself, and like it's all theory, but like it's it's crazy how it's like you're going through this explanation through like a crime scene of a bullet coming out of a gun. I don't know. It's it's really fucking dope. I would definitely check it out. Um, other game I did beat was Ray Ravenlock, which just released uh, like what last week or whatever. It's a really quick two game. Weeks ago, yeah, yeah. It was two weeks, yeah. It, it's like a four-hour game. It just played fucking perfect. Like it, I gave this one a nine out of ten. Like I, I'm, I'm exactly how Disney Princess felt about Coffee Talk with this game. I don't know what could have made it better, but like it was damn near perfect. Like combat felt great. The the difficulty wasn't like over the top. Like you unlocked abilities throughout the game. They're like, oh okay, cool. Now I can take on these enemies a little bit easier, or I can have different strategy to take on. And like each mission felt like a direct mission, and then, like some of them felt like side missions, but then they ended up being main missions later. I was like, holy fuck! Like how is this game getting twisted and turned? And and it just all culminated all really good together. Um, Res, please, you dropped it. I just see you yeah. threw it in there. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot all about it, but uh, Disney, Disney's right. We we did have a game today for my co-op stream. Oh, shit, I forgot another game on my list, dude. I'm out here forgetting everything. Wait, my list's bigger than yours now. Everything oh, no. pale. All right, while, everything while, while, while you're updating your list, I just wanted to cover uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor because obviously everybody knows I beat it. Fun, phenomenal game, like 10 out of 10, but... It, because it was a 10 out of 10, I am so stuck on the lore and, like, the, the world and exploring. Like, I don't ever go back and play games. I don't explore open world games. I'm open, I'm going back and exploring a game after I beat it. Just so I can try and 100% this game. And I'm just like, yo, this game is such a dope-ass game. It shit has pissed me off. Like, when you have to... F Never mind, I can't spoil shit. Bro, like, this game is just fucking insane. I love it. Can't wait until you guys can finally play it because it's patch 5 now. You... It's got to be running on PC pretty good. Playable, maybe. But, like, it's not It's not Tears of the Kingdom good. That's the problem. Like, <laughs> it's, prob it's probably it's probably better story-wise as Tears of the Kingdom. Like, oh, yeah, Tears of the Kingdom. Especially because, like, the investment that we've had for, like, lifelong, you know, Star Wars fans, at least on my end. Right. But, like, I, I was more concerned. It's like, okay, you're on patch five. When's oh, right. patch six? Like, <laughs> yeah, if right. It need, if, it need, if it needed five patches, it's probably going to need a sixth. 
yeah. And then so and then, hopefully you guys play that. And, but um, <laughs> until they bring back the Windows Service Pack for yeah. Jedi Survivor. All right. So were there any other games you guys wanted to talk about before we move on? I know we've been talking about what we've yeah, been playing sure. a lot. I'll at least mention Disney's game here, Res. Please, we played our co-op game today, but I only got an hour in before we dropped the game. Uh, we saw flocked a game today. That <sighs> And we we tried to see, okay, maybe it was a one-off soft lock. We soft locked it three times in a row, and we were like, you know, maybe Ooh. this isn't maybe this isn't a, a bug, but a feature. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's built into the game now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah on so. the big the boss, point, she says. You on soft locked on a big boss. boss. Yeah, the first boss. So there are five five books in the or five pages in the book that you go through, and there are six chapters for each book. Well, the first page, we got to the final boss, and we soft flocked him. I yeah. was I was actually destroyed because we were starting to have fun. We were actually getting into the content, and then every time we went to go do the mechanic, the camera would shoot underneath the floor, and you couldn't do the camera. And you couldn't see anything anymore, so you had to play mm. without the camera. Oh Jesus! Which That's wasn't a mechanic. <laughs> it was it was it was an actual bug. Yeah, so. it was broken. not a feature. <laughs> it was not a feature. Awesome. Uh, so, that's disappointing. Yeah, it's and definitely... also, Starship Troopers. I, I at least want to say one thing about Give that. it a shout out real so quick. We talked about Starship Troopers last week. It, it released this week. And honestly, we were like, this might be that game for $25. It is it. It's that game right now. It's super fun. Yeah. It is honestly one of the most enjoyable just first person shooters as of late that's it's just not pvp it's pve and like you everything you do feels important like you feel like yeah a cog in the machine there's 16 other dudes <laughs> doing the same mission as you but if one of you starts fucking up you all start losing <laughs> damn yeah so I, 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 I think i might pick this up now now that i'm it's... definitely looking yeah. at, at starship and uh like a buddy of mine uh Shwez was also streaming it uh and it looked super fun and like i'm like man we can I know a lot of people are interested in this. We can get like a 16 person <laughs> squad in there. Like, all hop into a Discord everyone's chat. Sitting there waiting to buy it. Everyone's like, no, you buy it first. No, no you, you buy it first. Because like, cause, cause okay, like, cause, cause we've been burnt so much lately. You, like, I don't oh, yeah. want to invest money you, into it. Yeah, you've pulled the trigger, and we appreciate you for that. Yeah. yeah. You really yeah. did. And I ended up playing with Philip for today, and it, it definitely was worth the purchase. It's, it's super fun, and I think I would honestly make a weekly stream of it with That's... friends. Uh, well, you, you heard it here first, right. folks. I'm I'm good any day, but but Sundays at seven. <laughs> yeah, weirdly uh, enough. Yeah, weirdly yeah, enough. Yeah, weirdly uh, but enough. But I think that works. Uh, and then obviously Wednesdays, because you know your boys got disc golf. Hell yeah! So in summer. Enough of what we've been dinner. playing. Let's move on to the upcoming game releases. All right, Roger. So we actually got a much bigger list than we have been getting the past couple of weeks. Kick us off here. What's going on with this upcoming game releases? Sorry about that. My Discord just dropped. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, if you want to kick us off here with uh, what's going on with the upcoming game releases, because we have a bigger list than normal. Yeah, we actually have quite a few. Not very many of them that are really truly, uh, I'd say, wallet-bursting games where you're going to want to go for them. But we actually have the second League of Legends game, like solo, like uh, story game to release within like two months. Mm -hmm. This is actually quite surprising that Riot Games has now had two League of Legends story games. Convergence, a League of Legends story, now focuses on another one of the mid lane characters for the game. We now have a game on Echo. So the idea is being able to uh, you, you look at different objectives, you try to work your way through the level, and when you fail, you reverse time and you try again. So that's one of the first games I saw on the list this week that I thought would be interesting to bring attention to, but let's go through the full list. Inkbound, a PC game coming out on May 22nd, uh, is the first game we'll see this week. Not much that I have to say about this game. It just looks like a small indie project that's coming out here. Um, but we have After Us. After Us is for PS5, Xbox, X and S, PC, and that comes out on the 23rd. That is a next-gen exclusive game we're talking about here, I believe. I don't think this has come out for... No, this is next-gen only. So this looks interesting. We saw this actually at uh, the Game Awards last year, as well as the Summer Games Fest, I believe. Mm-hmm. 
Um, we have after that Amnesia, uh, the bunker. So this is the next iteration of the Amnesia series. This comes out for PS4, Xbox One, PC, and the X and S. This actually does not come to PS5, it looks like, which is quite surprising for a game to only come to PS4 and not PS5. Next up, we have probably my next co-op game for me in Disney called Bread and Fred. Bread and Fred <laughs> is a two-person ice climbers clone game where you work as two penguins trying to navigate through a, uh, a, uh, a platformer style game and you're tied with a rope able to sort of swing each other from <laughs> from place to place. Oh, this is a knockoff of Unravel 2. Unravel 2, yeah. which is a knockoff of Ice Climbers, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say, this is clearly Ice no. Climbers. This no. is not Ice Climbers. Yeah, this is Ice Climbers, my man. I know. But there's there's that game. Uh, it looks quite interesting. Uh, for a small indie game, mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's by a big studio, actually, is it? It is by Sandcastle Studios and published by Apogee. Mm. Next up, we've got, as I said, Convergence, a League of Legends story. This comes out for all consoles, uh, including Switch, on May 23rd. And then we've got the OG, the game of the week, Farming <laughs> Simulator 23. This comes out for Switch, iOS, and Android. So we already had it on PC, but now get your fill on all of your mobile devices on the 23rd. Can't wait to farm Next no up. crops. You know what that makes wait. it? No. No joke. It's jokes. a proper pooper. It's a proper pooper. You're right. You're yeah. Right. You're right. <laughs> we always got to find our proper pooper of the episode. One of these times, there's always a proper pooper in the always. episode, for sure. Everyone. But at the end of the day, you always go back to MTGA. That's the real pooper game right there. Or just read a book. I don't know. Or just take the Switch in. <laughs> yeah, just take the Switch in. The I Switch mean, in. I guess I did. we had our proper pooper last week. Because <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, if you, if you can get... if you, if. you if your legs can handle being there for a few yeah, but hours, say uh, uh, if you're playing Tears of the Kingdom on the pooper, you might be there all day. Your butthole might not like you. <laughs> Eventually, you just won't be able to get up. Right. Uh, next up, we've got Miasma Chronicles. Miasma Ooh. Chronicles looks like a first-person shooter here. This looks good. Uh, the United States has fallen to a mysterious event called the Miasma. The Miasma is spreading across, and you take uh, take control of a few characters or a character inside a mining colony in the now ruins of the United States of America. Um, this is for next gen only. So yeah. this is going to be on PS5, X and S, and PC only. Yeah. This Let's game looks that. really good, Roger. This is actually we, yeah. me and Scott talked about this game whenever you yeah. were away for like a month or whatever yeah. it was, and we were like, man, we really wish Roger was here to talk about this one because this one seems like your kind of game. It actually looks like it has similar play uh, gameplay mm -hmm. to like Wasteland. I know mm -hmm. you yeah. and Bruno played Wasteland three, so that that's what it kind of reminds me of. But it looks pretty dope. It, it's it looks like an XCOM clone, which is really cool. XCOM clones can be done really well, which is awesome. And it, it graphically looks very pleasing. I'm interested to see, though, what what the story is behind it. And this is by the Bearded Ladies, which is an interesting name for a developer. Right, but it's published by 505 yeah. Games, so they're usually mm -hmm. publish yeah. a bunch of good games. Next up, we've got Planet of oh, Lana. Oh, Planet oh, of Lana oh, is oh. an off-Earth off odyssey, they call it. It's a single-player uh game by wishfully and published by thunderful it is an adventure game uh and it is for only windows devices that means the x and s one and pc xbox and exclusive ally. guess what game pass day one baby hey that's what we're looking for anymore if you're not if you're a microsoft game and you're not game pass day one then you're kind of jipping us anymore if microsoft releases a game that you have to pay for now and not get it on game pass honestly you kind of feel gypped. Right. I'm super excited for this one. It looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm super pumped to play this game and stream it. All right. And then we've got three games left on the list here. Um, one of them is kind of, I think, probably going to take the cake this week. But we do have Star Trek Resurgence. This is just a small... A uh, smaller game. Uh, it is for the PlayStation 5, Xbox X and S, PS4, and Xbox One and PC. It is a Star Trek story game. Um, I don't have much more to say about it other than that. And that also comes out on the 23rd. Now, leaving the 23rd, we enter the 25th of this week, which is Thursday. Thursday is going to have two games. One isn't really so much a release as a um, finishes being uh, early access. 
Hello Neighbor Search and Rescue releases for the PlayStation VR 2 and the PlayStation VR now. And you can find that on the 25th of this week. The Lord of the Rings, though, has their newest game launching on Thursday. Game of Lord the of the Rings Gollum. Nah. <laughs> I know, honestly, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, this is honestly going to be an interesting game. I don't think it's going to be Game of the Year worthy, but it's definitely going to give us some insight on some of the time, you know, during the Lord of the Rings movie on th- some of the things we didn't get to see. This will be for the PS5. Xbox X and S, PS4, the Xbox One, and the PC. This will not be on the Switch. And that releases on Thursday. So, with that being said, what are you guys excited for this week? Um, definitely Planet of Lana. Like, I've been following this game since mm-hmm. it was originally announced at the Xbox Game Showcase. Um, and it just, it has me hooked. I love those those smaller indie developed games. I've been playing a shit ton of them lately. And they're just great experiences because they're not 90 hour games I don't have to invest tons of time into them I can throw in 12 to 15 probably I think with this game is what I'm guessing and maybe even less to be honest with you I just don't know the scale of the game but it just looks beautiful and it, it just looks great honestly and then my Esma Chronicles looks pretty interesting honestly I might might have to give that a go um, and I'm probably going to hold off on Lord of the Rings Golem. I don't think that's going to be a $70 investment for me because I'm pretty sure it's yeah. a $70 game, and I'm not dropping $70 to a game that I... It's not looking good already, in my opinion. Yeah. So I'm going to wait and see, maybe catch it when it's on sale, like for 20 30 bucks or whatever, then maybe. maybe That's how I feel good. about the Star Wars right now. <laughs> <laughs> Which sucks, because <laughs> Jedi Survivor is like, it's up there with Game of the Year. It's Regardless mm-hmm. of the issues with PC, but on console and stuff, it's running fucking... F- now, I want to make one note here that I think you may not have realized. Gollum is only going to be a $50, 50. game. Okay. This is a substandard pricing. Yeah, still not investing $50 into it. Yeah, same. Me <laughs> either. I have $50, $25, of it, and you can have Starship Troopers instead. Mm-hmm. Exactly. What about you, Scott? Which which game here on the list is uh, are you excited for? Alternatively, against Roger's point... For $75, you can have Starship Troopers and Lord of the Rings Gollum. So, for five extra dollars than what you would normally play, you get two games. That's a, that's a steal. Um, but my answer still remains the same as last week. It's going to be Tears of the Kingdom. Can't wait to play that. Uh, <laughs> we're done here. No, uh, but in all seriousness, I, I really I really am excited for Lord of the Rings Gollum. I really am super mm-hmm. interested to, to visually get... Uh, that lore, um, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien made such a, a rich world there, and you know, uh, everybody but Amazon's didn't, you know, just been really, really good at it. That's a joke. Amazon's been okay with it. Um, so that's that's the one I'm gonna have to give it up to this week, uh, just because I, I do, as a Lord of the Rings fan, I mean, I, I want to see that. Uh, in human line asked a good question uh you know is it going to be a stealth game it looks like there's like stealth mm-hmm. some different aspects here but like the mainly like 90 percent stealth sort of deal um which kind of gives that allure a little bit where it's like you know you're witnessing a lot of stuff um uh, my asthma chronicles looks really really good we had talked about this like Vic had said uh one of the week one of the weekends that you weren't here um, and we did wish that you were there to, to like to talk about it and see you know if you know the hype and see if it was there um, <laughs> leave Amazon, Amazon alone. They weren't allowed to use the full material. They paid like two hundred million dollars. They can use whatever material they want. They, you know what? If they're if they weren't allowed to use the full material, at least they use the stuff that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll see. But um, no, it, it's it's got to be Lord of the Rings for me this week. Uh, but I will probably be downloading Farming Simulator. Farming Simulator. <laughs> really? Are you, are you serious? <laughs> he he I, lives yeah, in Lancaster I, now, I, man. He I, lives he lives yeah, in the farm. I, I, it's 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 literally right next to the right, right I mean, next. To he could like, touch grass instead of paying to touch fake. Grass. I will be touch. I will be touch. No, okay. I will be touching grass all this upcoming weekend. Which for any viewers, uh, I will not be here next weekend because I will be touching grass. But you know what I'm gonna be doing when I'm touching grass? Playing that switch, playing <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom on my downtime. <laughs> so, so you're still not touching grass. I understand. Got it. Cool. Still, I'll be touching grass, but metaphorically. Metaphorically, yeah. yeah. It, for for me this week, it it had to be Gollum. Uh, Aftros mm-hmm. looks good, uh, but it's it's gonna go Gollum for me just because of you know pulling at the heartstrings. For sure. Yeah. No, that's completely fair. 
All right, guys. Enough of uh, the upcoming game releases. We got to get into industry news because, boy, do we have a lot to dive into, guys. <laughs> So, I'm going to kick it off here with some unfortunate news. RIP here to a legend, uh, Brendan O'Brien, um, known for the original voice of Crash Bandicoot and also some of the other Crash can characters, Dr. Neo Cortex as well. So, we wanted to give him a uh, shout out. 60 years old, unfortunately, passed away, but definitely shout out to a legend here. So, if we want to throw uh, Fs here in the chat for him, that'd be great. But let's move on to what we're all here for. I mean, every week. We got a new update usually in regards to this is Microsoft and Activision Blizzard. And boy, did we get some big, big news. <laughs> the world will never know. Um, the EU has approved a deal, and that's fucking huge. And because of this, um, they also said that making COD an exclusive to Xbox would not significantly hark competition. And that's going to against everybody's opinion right now. And you're like, these guys don't know anything yeah. about gaming, I yeah. guess. Like, it, cool, they approved it, but at the same time, they approved it for all the wrong reasons. They're like, ah, <laughs> make COD only for one console. Who fucking cares? Yeah, it's not going to do nothing. Any, one of the number just, one yeah, yeah, yeah. games. It's just COD. There's plenty of other shooters out there, I'm sure. There's Fortnite, right? You know. But we're only talking about the Battle Royale. What, what's, <laughs> what other first-person arena shooters are we playing right now that are like COD? You know, on the on the flip side, you know, if we're talking about CS:GO styles, there's a ton. But if we're talking about COD specifically, that the that bigger, fast-paced, multiple live shooter. So you got you Battlefield watch... and you got Halo. Do you guys watch <laughs> Succession, or do you know of the show Succession? Oh yeah, or like so. X to find beta like... exactly. <laughs> I feel like we're on the receiving end of some like closed door decision and deal. This mm -hmm. is like it, I it feel like that's like what you're on the receiving end of, because it's like oh yeah, COD's not if 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 COD's you know there it's it's only it's not going to damage the market that much. It's not going to be that prominent. And like, don't get me wrong. Like Vic wants to see the approval of the merger, but on the flip side, Vic's like, well, this is wrong. Yeah, I don't I don't <laughs> agree with making the game exclusive, and I yeah. and, and if they did, I'm pretty sure it would significantly harm competition because. X, or PlayStation yeah. has already come out to say that they can't really fund their games now without Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you take Call of Duty from their platform, they can't make their games, therefore they're not going to be able to produce the same quality games that they're producing now, so therefore people are also going to want to leave the PlayStation market to go play Call of Duty on Xbox because mm -hmm. that's going to be the only place you're going to be able to play it. So, yeah, I don't don't agree with or that. people are going to leave PlayStation go to PC, and now we're going to see a bigger PC market yet again, and we're going to see the death of or or, 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 or any cloud service, because Call of Duty is coming to every cloud service. <laughs> or, more bro or, or more broken PC games, because the builds are also different. We're just going to put more builds out there. Yeah. Can't, uh, can't, can't standardize at all, right? Right, exactly. But some other news that came out, the UK CMA says that the EU is wrong for their decision. And not only that, the UK's parliament is grilling the shit out of the CMA. Like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, all of the decisions that you have made have been wrong. They, like, they, we don't want to be on the, re the bad end of the stick because they, the, the parliament understands that if they keep denying it, Xbox can be like, okay, we're just going to pull out of the UK altogether and not even do business there, and you guys are going to lose out on a huge part of your economy, because gaming is such a huge, huge part of the economy, obviously, that everybody knows, so it's, like, pretty crazy to, and, like, even the Prime Minister, uh, Rishi Sunak, I'm probably butchering Rishi Sunak. Her. yeah, um, he's also trying to steer the CMA to in the right way to flip their decision to make sure, hey, we need you to approve this deal so we don't look like the bad guys here. Because everyone is on board with approving this deal because not only that, China and Iraq are the other two ones that have recently approved the deal, and that's also huge. Um, and yeah, we haven't even gotten to the FTC because the FTC oh, is yeah. going to be the last ones, I think, to make a decision, and that's going to be the make it or break it kind of thing like what is the ftc coming up with here but there a lot of people are saying that like because like it, they're not blocking it they're taking it to court which is a different way of doing it and there's not enough evidence to hold up in a court to be like to prove them to be right everything that microsoft is doing is allowing competition to grow and so we'll definitely see how that goes but also well, no, if our blockade is perfectly legal if microsoft acquires them though that is anti-competition so that is that is still the the antithesis of competition by buying up all your competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
in a way. But I guess the way that they'll look at it is we know how bad Activision Blizzard is right now with toxicity in the workforce. Mm-hmm. So it's like you're on a double bladed sword or double edged sword right now. Honestly. Yeah, but at the same time, like you can then watch them flounder or fail. And I think they're kind of they're kind of expecting to be bought out because they're like, Yeah, fuck it. Who cares? We'll just get bought out, we'll all leave, and then they can take over. So who cares how fucked up we leave Activision Blizzard? Wait, let's just fuck it up as much as we can. Um, but see, Disney says Monopoly question mark. And that's the part where you're like, you edge up to mm-hmm. it. You, you're not, you're not legally just like Comcast isn't a monopoly, but right, real close. I mean, we we were just saying it. What other yeah. what other shooters on the market that has the same level as Call of Duty? There is what other MMO is truly competing with WoW at this point? Right. There might be one. We yeah, don't know. Maybe. Yeah, which we might talk about one later on. But um, just a quick stat, though. The uh, CMA has been overstated their information here by saying that the cloud market is 60 to 70%, uh, which included Game Pass subscribers, who actually don't use the xCloud for a part of their subscription. Yeah. So they were, like, in- inflating numbers to, like, prove their point and not even understanding how it really works and actually getting the real numbers. Well, it's like the CMA just coming out here. It's like it, it's like Mike Myers in the cat in, in the cat in the hand. Like you're not just wrong, you're stupid. <laughs> like they're like, they're really looking bad right now. Like no one's yeah. gonna take them serious on any other decisions that they're gonna have to make. Because this one is huge, and if you're fucking up this one, we're not gonna trust you with the small ones either. And especially with so many eyes on this, like this is your chance to like. If you're gonna put something out there, you better make sure it's right. You better make sure that you, you know, you pass that scrutiny test. You pass all that, and you're just throwing shit out there. Right. Um, and then just one quick fact or information there that popped out from the studio director from Zenimax Online in Hungary. Um, he said he wants to work on Activision Blizzard IPs, and then like the other studios that Xbox owns are excited for this acquisition because they understand how many IPs that Activision Blizzard actually owns that have been dormant for such a long time. And if you can get these other developers who have been producing really, really great games to produce on these other IPs, like Xbox can have so much going for them in in, in such a, a crazy way. And I'm, I'm really excited for this deal. Obviously, I'm a fanboy of Xbox and Microsoft, but definitely want to make sure we do it the right way. Like, as long as we, 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 we set those those standards correctly, we set those guidelines, those legal documents in place saying, hey, you can't, you can't make a Call of Duty exclusive 10-year agreements. Like, all of that makes sense. Let's drive... Um, um, just drawing a blank here. But yeah, whatever. So Innovation? Yes, innovation and, and competition, honestly. that That's really what we're looking forward here. But um, just real quick, though, because I just said China did approve the deal. I wonder if this has part to do with the deal that they just signed with Microsoft. Um, they signed a cloud service framework agreement, and this is going to basically help bolster cloud computing, big data, and uh, Azure OpenAI and other info technology by increasing the output efficiency by 20 to 30% while also decreasing cost by 30 to 40 percent so like to me it sounds like a no-brainer but i'm seeing like what's what's the the tie-in here but i know like china wants to use some of microsoft's cloud services for an upcoming game that they haven't officially like came out and described but like they're using like the cloud services for this new game so it'll be really interesting to see so yeah that is interesting with the 20 to 30 percent and still reduce the cost to 30 to 40 yeah like Mm. That cloud, that that, That's that 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 cloud power and the use of the AI, like we already see the benefits of AI. Like, yeah. it's 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 fucking insane to be honest. It's kind of low key scary, but um, oh, yeah. enough of Microsoft. EA had some, uh, I think, some good news here this week for once. Yeah. So um, EA college football players will now be able to use their will now be able to use their likeness if they opt in to do so. So EA will work with college football players. Um, to if the college football players want to, they'll you know they'll get their likeness, uh, their name, image, likeness, uh, in games, things like that, um, and they're gonna get paid for. It. They're gonna get paid for it. Um, I remember just what a couple years ago, like that was that was very very frowned upon, mm-hmm. um, and now we've come full circle to where it's like you want to be in a video game, we'll yeah. get you paid. Right. Uh, so basically, what's happening is the players who do agree. They're going to have their name, image, likeness featured in EA Sports College Football. Uh, they're going to receive compensation for it. Once they do opt in, they can receive a face scan of their likeness to be placed in the game. But we're looking at like 120 college football teams, which is going to be like 
thousands of players. Mm -hmm. So maybe not everybody will will get the face scan. Um, I kind of worry about that a little bit because then you're going to start looking at like you know you how you have franchise players in the NFL. You're going to start looking at you know franchise players for college <laughs> teams, which is right. kind of a little weird. Uh, I, I see that I see that coming out. Mm -hmm. um, but there are players that if they don't want to, uh, EA Sports is really just going to create a, a generic player uh, for that position. It's you know it's one of those things that when looking into it, it seems like a very no pressure situation. You can if you want. If you don't want to, you're not going to get forced. Like you know, hey, here's running back number one. Right. Here's running back number two. Now I don't think running back number one is going to say I don't want my right. lightning speed. <laughs> oh yeah. But that goes into that little scary part earlier when you talk about quarterbacks rb ones wide receiver ones like they want their name out there right and that's gonna you know, I, I worry a little bit about like okay well how much money did you bring in when you were in college because now that's how much right. money you could reasonably bring in to the franchise in the nfl so like is that going to be like another drafting yeah. piece there um and then so like little, think about it too weird. like how many years like do they spend at college like some of them yeah. go one and done and they're moving on to the nfl or like are players going to want to stay four years and get that check from the, the and nil deals cap, or do they have to stay there that money. yeah yeah like if somebody who originally was already nfl ready by year two and wants to go early draft well now i know that i can at least get four more years out of playing at you know lsu or arizona or play it for the Gators. Like I can do that for three more years. Maybe work. Maybe work a draft deal. Maybe kind of figure something out. There's a lot of stuff. But I mean, when it comes down to just being able to use the likeness, get paid for it, good stuff come out of there. Lots of questions, but that's for another style. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Podcast. So Roger, CD Project Red was in the news again, and this one, yeah, not so good. <laughs> Again. Yeah, so CD Projekt Red has decided to rescope their Witcher spinoff game called Project Sirius. They decided in doing so they're going to have to lay off 29 of their employees. Uh, this mostly impacts the developers at uh, Molasses Flood, the American studio that was behind the flame in the flood. So just a small change there. They're, they're rescoping projects because probably due to the fact that they failed with uh with their you know with some of their releases for i don't know cyberpunk right <laughs> money might not be <laughs> where it needs to be so yeah makes sense so super mario bros we know this this movie has been fucking phenomenal and some crazy stats that released this week it has became mexico's highest grossing film of all time i don't like mexico is mexico whatever but like still super mario bros is the number one movie ever in mexico is me personally i think this is mind-blowing in a way of all movies but um, Mexico's gross sitting is at 82.4 million and the worldwide gross art is around 1.2 billion dollars it is a 23rd highest grossing movie of all time in the world what's your guys takes on the movie is this does it surprise you or is this like okay this movie was that fucking good no it, it doesn't Shit surprise me avatar. <laughs> yeah, avatar, Shit yeah. avatar it's not the catching it crap dude uh, yeah no honestly this this doesn't surprise me it was geared towards kids they did really well it felt like a disney a Disney sort of Pixar level animation for a movie like it it really felt good and the star cast really brought out what was you know truly amazing about this movie and it goes to show that yeah maybe you can do video game movies because like they've always been memorable you know hey the Tomb Raider movies they were memorable mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the game came first and Inhuman here has a great point. It's already available to rent and to buy, which is fucking mind blowing because the movie is still in theaters. It yeah, just maybe. dropped in theaters not that long ago, and the fact that it's already available to buy and rent digitally, like it's crazy. I remember when you used to wait like six to ten months to wait until a movie came out on DVD or VHS or whatever the mm -hmm. time frame we were looking at, and it's just like, yo, the game is already or the movie is already available to, to buy and rent. And that's just going to add to the dollar that this, that this game yeah. is working in. Or movies. We're looking at like, we're looking at frozen type popularity here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a game. This is going to be a game. This is going to be a movie that like, you know, kids are going to watch with breakfast, lunch, and dinner or, Oh, the, Oh, the kids are acting up or Hey, let's just, let's, let's distract the kids. Like throw on, peaches, throw peaches, on, peaches. Throw, peaches, peaches, peaches. <laughs> yeah. Throw on and we had talked about this when, 
you know, we were first looking at the numbers. Like, once again, you you know, it's going to be your frozen type movie where your kids want to watch your kids want to watch this like inhuman said yeah it bought that fast for the kids but how many times have you watched it inhuman how many times have you sat there and watched it because it's one of those things like geared towards somebody but really made for other people for other audiences like legend of Korra might have been made for kids who were watching nickelodeon at the time or it might, might have been geared towards them but it was it was made for people who were yep. friends of like like fans of Avatar, The Last Airbender, mm-hmm. like so, I think this is just one of those things where they hit every nail on the head first try, and they didn't alienate their audiences of the different age groups or the different uh, backgrounds. Like you had you know full grown adults with no kids going to see the movie, and you had adults with you know their three kids watching the movie in the theater like it was it was meant for everyone you know people who played super mario in their youth people who you know they play the new mario games people who only know mario because he's in smash bros or 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 play people who go back and play paper mario from 30 years ago like my (laughs) if you if you want to play that 20 years after it drops absolutely and we had talked about that this is the like one of the ultimate family friendly movies because everybody knows mario from some aspect of their life yeah and very little pandering it's a very straightforward movie it has its references it has everything like that it is a fun beginning to end movie (laughs) jack black killed it thank god for him or this movie would have failed um so (laughs) not actually you know i got i gotta back up my boy all right so let's move on here to some interesting industry news here Stanford at the Brainstorm Lab has put out a new study, and it goes to show that Republicans are full of shit. (laughs) Talking head Republicans right now in, say, Congress and other locations like the House, just, they don't, they use this as a scapegoat for gun violence. And Stanford Brainstorm Lab has said that there is no reputable link between playing video games and real life violence. According to the Gun Violence Archive, there have been 200 mass shootings so far in 2023 in the U.S. Across the last three years, there have been more than 600 mass shootings on average per year. That's roughly two per day, resulting in a tragic loss of life. But over the years, people have been attributing that maybe it's video games and the rise of video games, shooters, you know, and making them like Fortnite as a you know focal point in kids lives kevin mccarthy once said uh but the idea of video games that dehumanizes individuals to have a game of shooting individuals and others i've always felt that is a problem for future generations and others we've watched from studio uh, studies shown before of what this does to individuals and that's not true we we have a study right now saying that's not the case video games don't do that it actually sometimes helps kids to deal with those issues, those those problems that they have. The study has no casual link, there is no casual link between video games and real life gun violence. Fortune adds that playing violent video games does have an association with aggression, but not violence. So people are more, yes, apt to be maybe aggressive, more, more out, not outgoing, but more forward in their in their feelings, in their, in their, the way they act in society. But aggression is measured by self-reported surveys rather than recorded actions. So did somebody feel more aggressive? Uh, yeah, I feel more aggressive after I finish game. <laughs> it's, it's all subjective instead of fact, fact-based, fact-found. Right. Um, and the study then looked at the track changes in violent crimes alongside the tracked release of so-called violent video games. Researchers used between the two. In fact, it said that there was a mild decrease in real-life crime following the rise in popularity of video games, with the suggestion by researchers that video games may actually be an outlet for aggression, not the cause thereof. If people are too busy at home playing video games, they're not outside shooting up people. <laughs> That's like a no-brainer. You know? I mean, yeah, yeah it, it, it's and, it's it's finally the answer to that. Yeah, and there's also one last thing that they found. The research also went out to point that there is a positive benefit to video <laughs> games, emphasizing that they are beneficial to your world outlook, your mental health, as well as your development of your mental capabilities. 
those who played video games had a better problem solving skill improved self-esteem cognitive abilities that just it in- decreases depression stress and loneliness especially yeah. in modern games yeah so i i can i can definitely account to that because like i deal with anxiety and one way for me to decompress of every all the stresses to play video games like hey i talk mm-hmm. to my fiance like hey honey i need to play a game for like an hour or so oh yeah that's fine go right ahead because she understands that i i need that to just it, it mellows me out whether i'm shooting people in call of duty or if i'm hopping into coffee talk and just vibing you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, coffee talk makes me want to go shoot up a coffee, yeah, a yeah. coffee shop. So yeah, sorry. yeah, like, oh man, I'm so mad. Neil, dude. <laughs> fuck Neil. <laughs> I knew you'd be excited once you uh, find out who Neil was. Like, yeah. like, fuck Neil fuck and you. his illegal alien status. <laughs> yeah. But so, as a kid, do you guys remember just having this pounded into your brain? Yeah. Yeah. I like, remember my parents it. saying, like, video games are bad for you. And I was like, okay, but reading isn't? Yeah, they're going to rot your brain. They're you know, Like, oh, kids kids these days, ever, ever since Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2 came out, <laughs> have been driving around killing hookers and taking their money. <laughs> like, very clearly. It, it was, this, this is, this Honestly? is, this is it. This is, this is the one, this is the exonerating study. Because you have... Not just Republicans, not just Democrats. You have, you know, that that party who want to find something to blame, want to look at this, want to want to to blame something. Right. I think Um, I think the biggest issue here we're also missing is that like video games have been around a lot longer than the actual cause. I think with many of our societal issues, they've been around. They've been around for longer than we've been alive. Or Vic and I have been alive. And same with you, I'm pretty sure, Scott. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> Scott's, Scott's the old head, you know. Well, they're about 35, 40 years old now. That's, yeah. That's... We grew up with video games, honestly. Yeah. Absolutely. But so what, you know, and and without getting too far into this, because we could go. This could be a whole episode. Or deep. <laughs> like, you know, there's other things that had happened in society, like you had said, when video games started coming around. Like, you know, there there's a rise in mental health issues. There's a rise in, like, being able to see those things. There's a rise in being able to identify those things. And yeah. if they want to sit here and blame video games for gun violence, like, uh, fuck that because I don't know if you got about you guys, but I played number crunchers when I was a kid or number munchers. That yeah. shit didn't make that shit didn't make me any better at math. <laughs> so there's no way that this is gonna make me like more violent. Like, and there's and, natural tendencies and things like that, but it's and, like it proves that this helps you. It's a it's scapegoating. It's it's a it's it's exactly scapegoat. what it is. Exactly. And, it's, it's, at the end of the day, you know, we're not looking at some of the true issues here we have, and that's, say, social media and the and the idea that everyone needs... Yeah, even us. Don't get us wrong. We're running oh, a yeah. podcast. We're looking for fame. Everyone is. But, you know, like, yeah. everyone trying to get famous, everyone looking at, like, oh, I need to be better. This person's right. better than comparing, me. You know? Comparing oh, lives to other people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they got a new car. Gonna... Oh, they got married. Oh, they had well, a kid. That's, yeah, like, that's that, a whole... That goes with another study where it's like, you like you know, they've, they've done studies where, like, mainly uh, younger younger teens, mm-hmm. preteens, 12 to 11 to 14, something like that. You know, they, they have a much higher like that many people have uh, tested much higher for you know depression things like that because of this uh you know i'm only going to post the good shit culture that we have yeah uh, like, it's and, yeah. and social media is one of the things i think we're kind of sleeping on and everyone's like it has to be video games because for example like look at far cry 6 there was a mission in there where you're literally Doing some dude's fucking TikTok for him while he's in a war zone. Shit's blowing up around him, and he's like doing crunches in the middle of a minefield. And yeah, like, I, you know, people are doing this shit real life. Like it's if you not yeah, a if, joke. if you want a really good parallel, actually, to like the power of like the social media and and what people mm-hmm. care about and look at, um, Childish Gambino's "This Is America" music video. Yeah, yeah, because like the parallels you have there and you see like oh don't look at the gun don't look at the violence look at this dance this dance mm-hmm. is good <laughs> and then he moves on to the next thing like and and it's and he's killing it's just, people in it and he's just like but my dance is fire and you're like yeah. wow this is america yeah <laughs> yeah, and, yeah and I, but it's it's so refreshing to finally see this age-old answer that we already knew was there but like sitting there from you know obviously a reputable source like somebody who's been doing this study 
and be like, no, you guys are full of shit. You've been full of shit since the 90s. Like, yeah. that's it. Pick something else. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we could talk about this shit for all day, but I think it's time to move on to our gaming news because we got, we got a decent amount of shit to talk about here, too. So let's talk about this real quick. So, of course, I'm going to kick it off here with uh, Xbox. Got a bunch of new updates this week. First part is their deals. Obviously, they signed those 10-year agreements with a bunch of their cloud services. And uh, the first one is starting to begin. And it already has began on the 18th. Because GeForce Now, you were able to play Gears of War 5 on their service. And um, that's just the first of one many to come. Because on May 25th, you got Deathloop, Grounded, and Pentiment also becoming available. With many more to come. Uh, l- later on, so that's a big first step. And these aren't, and and these aren't just like small games. These are these are pretty large games. Some of like the best games, like Deathloop, ten out of ten. Uh, we know how good Grounded is. Pentiment was like a nine out of ten or something mm-hmm. like that. Gears of War Five is arguably one of the best Gears games of all time, and like, especially with the DLC Hive Busters, like this game is like is what make the Xbox Series X shine. Is Gears of War Five yeah. is one of the games, so yeah, they're not getting some slack off games. They're getting some big games, and that's only the first of many to come. And what is coming to Xbox though is uh, two former PlayStation Five exclusives. Stray um, recently got an ESRB rating for the Xbox version, so hopefully we'll see that in the maybe at the Xbox Game Showcase. Um, and also Kenna Bridges of Spirit, Bridge of Spirits. Um, it was all but confirmed by the developers. This game will be coming to Xbox via Twitter. Um, that's where they they. Because, like, someone, like, tweeted and were like, hey, man, I guess I should give up the, of this ever coming to Xbox. And they, they, like, happened to tweet back. They're like, don't give up too soon. So, like, yeah. that's just, you're, you're, you're basically confirming. It's on the way. Um, so that was pretty awesome because those are two games that I wanted to get the PS5 just to play. Now I don't have to get the PS5 because they're coming to my console anyway. So I'm good where I'm at. Um, but Forza Horizon 5, Roger, I know we played it. We're part of this number here. They have had surpassed 30 million players. 30 million. That is a lot of fucking 30. players. Mm-hmm. Whether it's Game Pass or people who bought the game, um, to me, that's just fucking insane because PlayStation, I think, struggles in getting player count, and I don't think there's many PlayStation games that even touches 30, 30 million, in my opinion. But, um, Roger, I know you're a big Age of Empires fan, and Age of Empires 2 to the Definitive Edition is getting a Return of Rome DLC, and this is a brand new DLC that wasn't even on the original game before. This brings content from the first original game. You can play with 17 new factions, 3 new campaign arcs, and it really, it was released um, last week on May 16th. Have you checked out the, the, the Definitive Edition of Age of Empires 2 yet, or... No, I actually haven't played Age of Empires in quite a while now. I picked it up the first week it came out for the new Age of Empires, and I had a lot of fun with it. But it, it's just interesting to see such a iconic classic game. You know, we've got the Wulu meme coming from there. We've got, you know, fitting elephants on boats memes. Like, Age of Empires is like the OG for for some video game memes, and to find that one of the OG Age of Empire games that kind of really carried video games on the PC is getting an a new DLC. That's cool. Yeah, it, I was really surprised. And, yeah, it's pretty cool to see. Uh, and it, and I forget how much is this. You know, I mean, it's on Game Pass. <gasps> free? Oh, yeah, free, it's free. Free ninety nine. Yeah, and and, and we're tax. and we're talking about a game that was originally released back in nineteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. And now that it has its remastered, obviously back in 2019, and this here it is now. It's on Game Pass, and it's getting brand new DLC. So that's it's pretty awesome to see that the support and the love is still there, and they're still supporting the brand new one, Age of Empires 4, which is going to get its I think its console release here uh, soon as well. But um, another game that got an, is getting an update. Halo Infinite is getting season four. Um, it's coming sometime in June 2023. I mean, the showcase is in June, so are we getting it same day, same week? I don't know. We'll see. But the big part here is the infection game mode is returning um, to the game, along with a new career progression system. And that's all of the news we see now. But I'm sure that they're holding on to the big, juicy stuff for the showcase. That would be my guess. Campaign season two? Maybe. Are we finally getting the expansion that everybody (laughs) wants? Well, the, maybe, maybe not even an expansion at this point. It would just be what we were promised. It's not supposed to be an expansion. It's just the continuation. Right. So ho- hopefully we do get that for sure. Or or we get the announcement of it's moving to the Unreal Engine 5 yeah. and the Battle Royale and everything else that could possibly happen. 
Um, but some last, uh, we've got two more things, two more sections here for Xbox sales numbers. So the Series X and S has finally reached 2 million units sold in the UK. It has climbed into the top 10 fastest selling list of all time. And surprisingly, it has sold faster than the Switch in the UK. It, mm. And they're, they're comparing the numbers, how fast did it take to get to 2 million units? And the Xbox Series X, S and X has sold faster to get to that number than the Switch. So I'm just like, that's that's actually pretty big because we know how popular the Switch is and how many units the Switch has sold. And, and I think the, the important thing we need to look at this and say, what was the Switch catalog for that first year? It wasn't big. so And neither is Xbox. We know well, that there's nothing on Xbox. Game Pass. Game Pass, yes. Ah, see, that's what we have to come back to is Game Pass is the reason why they're selling. And if, and if PlayStation could take a, a moment and look at the playbook of Microsoft and go, oh, get a subscription model going. That works. And actually fill it with content. Yeah. Um, some other sales numbers, though, came out for Japan. And they were comparing the 360 because obviously, you know, the 360 was the best Xbox mm-hmm. console versus the series in the first 30 months. The Series S and X has sold 440,000 versus the 360 has sold about 611,000 in the first 30 months. So we see a little bit of a drop off here. And I think that just account, uh, it comes down to what games are available. We know how the succession of Game Pass, but how are you selling that Japanese audience? And granted, now there's titles. You got the Yakuza franchise, and and um, oh shit, I'm drawing up. Like there's a bunch, uh, there's a bunch of games coming out there with a, a Persona as well. Like there's a bunch of games in that Persona, um, that Japanese market that people love. But what about the new titles? Which we're gonna talk about a little bit later on. Uh, maybe some theories on what's what could drive those sales to go up a little bit higher. Um, but for Game Pass, though, the the additions got FIFA 2023 on console and PC, Eastern Exorcist on console and PC, and Ghost Lore coming to console. Those are all available right now. And then on the 23rd, you get Planet of Lana, which we talked about earlier for console and PC. Cassette Beast coming to console. Roger, I know you d- dove into this on the PC, so I'm excited to see this coming to my Xbox here on the 25th. Massive Chalice coming to cloud and console on the 25th. This is a game that was originally part of Games of Gold long time ago because I own this game via that service so interesting to see that they added this to Game Pass um, then you got Railway Empire 2 coming to all plat- um, all services on May 25th and Chicory A Colorful Tale coming to console and PC on May 30th I know this game is pretty big because this was game was brought up a lot at the Game Awards when we were t- when we were watching the Game Awards this, this, this fucking game was in every category it seemed like it was being nominated for so many different things you're like holy fuck like this game is it, it has to be good if it's being nominated for all these awards. So I'm excited for this to come to Game Pass, and I'm probably going to check this out. Um, but, of course, with additions, there are departures. On May 31st, Europa Universalis, I'm probably butchering that word, PC yes. um, version is leaving. <laughs> Evil Genesis 2 World Domination leaving all uh, all services. FIFA 21, no brainer, we're getting FIFA 23, so that's fine. Floppy Nights and Lawn Mowing Simulator. Sad, be- I mean, but... I can't believe we're losing Lawn Mowing Simulator. R.I.P. to a real one. I know. I know. Yeah. Maybe they'll bring it back, or maybe we'll get Farming Simulator 2023. <laughs> hey, Siri, hey, Siri, play taps. <laughs> so that's all of our Xbox news. Scott, if you want to talk about Nintendo, Nintendo had some interesting interesting numbers here. So, yeah, Nintendo's had uh, quite... I mean, they're having, having quite the week, but um, they're having uh, quite the seven years. So it uh, <laughs> looks like... <laughs> They've uh, they've made more than sixty nine billion dollars, nice, in the past seven years. Uh, <laughs> now, I mean, there's been a lot of things that have been there's been a lot of things coming out in the past seven years, Breath of the Wild, now Tears of the Kingdom, but that's still uh, that's still a, a monumental number. Fire uh, Emblem, I, you if, know. I, if Fire Emblem, you have uh, your Pokemon series, you have everything that Monster comes out. Monster Hunter, yeah, yeah everything that's going to come out. That of course is going to make sixty nine billion dollars. I actually hope that we could have rounded that number up to seventy, but you just decided not to, and you yeah. did that for me. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, they, I mean that's a that, that's an, a remarkable number. Seven years, like that's basically ten billion dollars a year. It's fucking insane. We're looking at, on average. Um, so, but going away from that, uh, we got uh, a couple things going on with some of the games. We all know 
uh, some of the games we will be talking about. Well, one of the games we will be talking about. <laughs> but uh, So Pac-Man 99, if anybody remembers that or even knew it existed, uh, that will be getting shutted, <laughs> shutting down and, and delisting. Um, that's like a Battle Royale version of Pac-Man. It's going to start to have its features gradually shut down uh, in August uh, until the game is fully pulled from the eShop until in October. Um, thankfully for the dozens of people that play this game, uh, the paid DLC, uh, which is about three different offline modes and some custom themes, will still be playable after the game's delisted. So good on them. Uh, taking care of at least the people that have paid for some of the DLC. Yeah. I think it's a very, very good thing this is, for them to this do. This is something that Nintendo has done well. We've seen it actually with the Wii U when they turned off the shop, and then we saw it on the Nintendo 3DS when they turned off the shop. When they turned off the shop on those consoles, they made sure to support things on them, like Nintendo, or like Pokemon Home, for example, is still usable even though the shop is discontinued. Nintendo is make strides to make sure that they preserve the content for their people because they play them archivally. They play them back to like the Game Boy Color kind of games. Yeah, this is very much like you. This is this is your like case in point example number one of service mm -hmm. after sale. Like, they're still taking care of anybody and everybody who has paid for something from them. I wonder if this is... Sure like... Make sure you can still pay for things. Make sure you can still play things after you've paid them. Just because it's delisted for any new future players doesn't mean that the players who have paid for it don't get to play it anymore. Well, we, this is this is a good shot at Warner Brothers and uh, Multiverse. Yeah. Pretty oh much. yeah. I'm just I'm just curious though, was this was this like a tactic? Like people are just gonna go out there and buy Pac Man ninety nine and make sure they get the DLC so they can always have access to this game because they love the game preservation. Uh, I mean the if they're buying it now they did a, not love it. It's a one off. Yeah. It's a one off thing, but you know, even something as small and inconsequential as Pac Man ninety nine is getting support. That's 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 what I think is important here is like Whoever talks about Pac Man ninety nine, I've I never forgot met somebody who played it. I, I I have never met somebody. Yeah, no. The, oh, what <laughs> games do you play? Warzone, this. Oh, Pac Man ninety nine. When the mood hit, like nobody. But like, so Inhuman raises a very very good point. Like, no games ever delisted if you're on PC. Pretty Steam much has delisted stuff though, but. <laughs> That's Steam. <laughs> yeah, that's Steam. <laughs> so so um, most people get their games yeah. though. But Nintendo's yeah. Nintendo's greatest game of all time. What's going mm, on with it? Not yet. Not yet. So uh, <laughs> it's getting there. Pokemon. You mean Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Absolutely. Mm. Uh, they are finally getting. It is finally getting home support though. So they're getting home support. <laughs> the release date was announced, but has been retracted since. That's really what we got coming out of Scarlet and Violet. <laughs> um, now, there's an elephant in the room. We're holding on for a minute. I promise. We got to keep you just right on the edge of your seat. Going to Nintendo services, so Nintendo Switch Online, which Vic has been loving, by the way. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> they announced the first three Super Mario Advance games will be added to Switch Online Plus uh, expansion pack catalog, catalog and later this month, probably in like, what, the 26th, mm -hmm. so we're looking at end of the week. Yeah. Two week and a half. Um, so that's going to be Super Mario Advance, Super Mario World, which is Super Mario Advance 2, and then Yoshi's Island, Super Mario Advance 3. I got some more Mario games to play after I beat Paper Mario. So, <laughs> <laughs> but now to that elephant in the room that we've been talking about for Nintendo, right? This is monumental. We we've talked earlier in this episode about how we feel about Tears of the Kingdom, but let's look at the scoreboard, sir. What does capitalism have to say about this? <laughs> <laughs> what does what does the free market economy have to say about Zelda and Tears of the Kingdom? So this has broken uh, Nintendo records with 10 million sales in three days. It is the fastest selling Nintendo game for any system in Europe and the Americas. It's the fastest selling Nintendo game ever in the United States. Uh, it's the seventh biggest game launch in Japan of all time. Uh, it's already the second best selling Zelda game of all time. It's already at a third of the Breath of the Wild lifetime sales in three days. I know, shaking your head, absolutely ridiculous. It gets it gets better. Mm -hmm. There's more. 
Uh, four million units sold in America. Two point two four units, uh, million units sold in Japan. Right. Um, so we're looking at a forty out of forty score in the Japanese magazine, magazine uh, Famitsu, which only twenty eight games in in the thirty seven year history of this magazine have scored a forty. Uh, it scored a ten from a UK magazine. Uh, Edge, and this is only t- like it's one of 24 games, it's the 25th game, I believe, uh, to receive that since the uh, since Edge had lost launched 30 years ago. Uh, so this has become only the sixth game in 30 years to receive the highest score in both Famitsu and Edge magazines. Scoreboard. <laughs> that is all I can say. Yes, yes. That is all I can that say was, is I, I scoreboard. That. That so, but <laughs> something interesting uh, had actually come across. So, the gameplay trailer that really, really sold this uh, mm-hmm. for like a lot of the last minute buyers who weren't sure about like the new mechanics and things like that. That was a last minute decision. <laughs> that was a very, very last minute decision. Yeah. Um, the very very last minute decision. So, um, in an interview for the Washington Post, uh, the series producer A.G. Aonuma admitted that Nintendo had some concerns over the fans' enthusiasm following the game's second trailer in February. Um, so, what they did is they decided to show a 13-minute gameplay of him himself playing it. Uh, they wanted the fans to actually like kind of see what the new mechanics were and get the concepts of Tears of the Kingdom. And so they showcase the abilities. They showcase, you know, recall, fuse, ultra hand, ascend, uh, to help a lot of fans like really understand. But it wasn't even so much as helping people understand. Then the secondary effect was letting people see how good this game actually was before they bought it. Yeah. Uh, you guys remember when that last gameplay trailer dropped? We had talked about it. Mm-hmm. It looked phenomenal, and that was a very, very last minute decision. So I'm kind of. I feel like there's an alternate universe somewhere where the decision was not made to to show that, and Zelda flopped, and somehow Redfall wins. But man, I just this has been <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. That is an alternate universe, bizarre. One of a billion right there. One, sir. Of, one <laughs> of a billion right there. But what a time this game is having. Mm-hmm. I'm already when there's a, people are already are already guaranteeing game of the year. They're already like I, it's the, you're, so rough. you're looking at it for sure. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. It's, it's going to be tough to dethrone it. Yeah. It's, it's something has to be phenomenal to get this out of I don't know if it's better than Paw Patrol. We haven't <laughs> We haven't done a side by side of Tears of the Kingdom, the Kingdom and Paw Patrol. And Paw Patrol. So you know what? We're gonna work on that, and we'll do a side by side, and we'll see what re- what people really think. Yeah. But man, it's all that's all I can say is scoreboard, scoreboard, scoreboard. <laughs> yeah. And what, and, and that's and what, what else is there? capitalism? Yeah, you vote with your dollar, <laughs> and the world spoke. Yeah, it sure did. So the world, obviously, we got Xbox, Nintendo. We can't forget about the third pillar of gaming. PlayStation had some uh, an announcement this week. Yeah. So Use after we heard the leak that they were having a uh, showcase coming up, but not win, they were finally like, all right, everyone, this week. Yeah. Like, okay, <laughs> cool. So this week, PlayStation is having a shadow drop of a showcase. Pretty They're much. like, yeah, uh, in a week, we're going to do a showcase. Oh, okay. The 24th at 4 p.m. EST, show, uh, we will get an hour-long glimpse into the upcoming year for PlayStation. What are we going to get? What's gonna flop? Uh, just stick around for the leaks and rumors, and you might have some ideas. But mm-hmm. um, I'm planning on covering this. I'm not sure if you guys will be on, but I'll probably live stream the showcase. If you guys are up for, you can hop on with me as well. We can react and and kind of cover that as well. So I'm really excited for that showcase. But um, Call of Duty, PlayStation's other pillar, I think, right. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> Activision Blizzard has yeah. issued a uh, cease and desist letter um, to a uh, COD 
Call of Duty modder like mod group for the game known as SM2. SM2 is consists of like maps, guns, perks, content from older CODs or Call of Duties like all grouped together into the, like this fan made mod that everyone's been loving. They've been working on this for like two plus years, and it's been running. First off, it was on the original Modern Warfare 2 engine. Um, but they were in the process of switching it to the Modern Warfare Remastered engine. And modders were going to make this game free to play. And I think this is when the order was given from Activision Blizzard because you no longer needed to buy Modern Warfare Remastered to play this if you could have just downloaded the mod separately and play it. And I think that that's what happened here. And I'm really sad to see that these modders and developers have been working on Another Call of Duty that's been better than what we've been getting over the past couple of years. We've seen it with Fortnite recently, and now we see it now with SM2. What What's coming out at the end of the year now, too? By who? Yeah, Sledgehammer Games. Trash. Modern Warfare 3. Maybe. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, can... That game, like, I've been calling it for a long time. I think we need to drop the yearly release. I think we need to have the Call of Duty live service oh, where... we were supposed to. Like... No, we were supposed to get a, like a, a two-year gap, and now we're not. That's what I mean, we were supposed to. But no, not I get I don't think we week. I don't even think we need that anymore. I need we need one Call of Duty. You update with maps, guns, whatever you want to do. Add new story line, content, just like like Master Chief Collection. That's it. Just one thing, Master Chief Collection. Literally, just every time you have a new story, put the tile there. Then all the content you can select what the fuck you want to play. There's already playlists on Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Why aren't we just adding playlists for each time you want to play? Oh, do you want to play, you know, Modern Warfare? Do you want to play Cold War? Do you want to play Future? Do you want to play, right. you know, World War II? What do you want to play? Select it. Boom, you're in. Yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's definitely my belief. I was going to make, like, a you know, just a funny little quip. We all laugh for, you know, a second or two. But, like, the more and more we talk about this, the sadder and sadder of the truth it becomes. It's like, if there's yeah. one thing that these developers fucking hate more than the players, it's people that are doing the game better than them. <laughs> They're doing You're their fucking job. For free. Uh, for free. For free 99. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, it, it's just... Ah, man. Have it's, you guys it's, seen the gameplay from, yeah. from SM2? Yeah. Like, SM2 yeah. looks fucking dope. Like, it would, I would love it to looks, play that every day. It looks amazing. Because it, 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 it dives into the nostalgia. Like, you can literally play... I don't know, man. Like, it was just the perfect culmination of Call of Duty. And we're never going to get what we really want out of Call well, of yeah, Duty anymore. Yeah, fuck us. Yeah. Just fuck us. Because we're going to buy it anyway. We're going to keep playing. Well, we're just going to continue the news here with bad Activision Blizzard news here. And this time, it's Blizzard specifically, Roger. <sighs> take take a minute because when I saw this, I was like, "Yeah, this is I kind. Of, this is this is absolutely." Dude, this news broke the internet because it was posted like four times in the damn Discord chat. <laughs> yeah, dude. Honestly, I just wanted to hit sad horn on my Discord soundboard because of this man. It just it it baffles me. Well, no, I I got you. I got you. Here we go. Here we go, boys. Uh oh. <laughs> that's what it feels like to me my man that's truly what it feels like the pve for overwatch 2 has actually been canceled for a year and a half they have for a year and a half known that this was going to be canceled and they just that was it yeah well they, at they least said, it, sorry. there is a remedy to it which we'll cover here yes with season seven so so they decided that the PVE sort of quests, missions, this whole story mode that they were going to add to the side of the game, because these developers who made Overwatch 2 were actually tasked with making a first-person shooter MMO, and the project slowly got shrunk down to just being a mod for Overwatch, it seems. And that's what we got, Overwatch 2. And they rebranded the game and sold us battle passes and told us, well, we're doing the battle passes so that we can pay for the single-player content we want to make that they actually had canceled a year and a half ago when the game dropped. They just didn't tell anyone outside of Overwatch. And it's crazy that this did not get leaked until now. Yeah, this is this is just some bullshit. It's what the game was sold on. You knew when the game dropped you weren't having this. Yeah. And you still you still held on to it and tried to hey, here's here's how you can get your PvE. You can you can buy the battle pass. That'll help us yeah. get your PvE, knowing that, that shit is done. And it, they just fucked us. 
and mm -hmm. absolutely fucked. If if I was a more avid Overwatch two player, I would have stopped, just because like. Yeah, I'd be upset that the PvE is gone, but the fact that they knew for the entire time mm -hmm. and still put shit out, and like you say, remedy band aid, maybe. Yeah. Like as far as I was really concerned about that, because that was the selling point, and then it's like you yeah. just lie for a year and a half. Yep. So let's at least talk about though for those who still want to play Overwatch. So if you still enjoy Overwatch Two and the fact that they brought the game back as a you know, if as long the game is now revitalized, don't get me wrong. Overwatch Two is still big. It's nothing like Overwatch One. Overwatch One had been a dead game for many years, just because the esports league kind of dried up. Overwatch Two has come back, and we're going to see three more seasons on the roadmap. Season Five, we've got Quest Watch. Quest Watch is an event. We don't have much detail about it, but you're going to be visiting different zones in uh, in the Overwatch world. Uh, we will get an event called Mischief and Magic. There will be a cinematic reveal for the new Season Five gameplay. Then we'll also get Summer Games. This is a returning event where we'll get things such as Lucio Ball, hopefully, which is uh, it's just Rocket League but in Overwatch Two. <laughs> <laughs> we also will have a 5v5 mini competition season on fire will return and the creator workshop mode will get some revamps next we've got season 6 season 6 will actually have the replacement for the PVE content we will be getting story missions these are going to be agent specific agent specific game modes so you will be there will be challenges for specific Asian agents <laughs> and you'll be getting uh, masteries and you'll it'll get you in-game content. With that, we will also be getting a new support hero. We just got one, but we will be getting an additional support hero. Then we'll be getting a new map as well as the hero masteries, as I said, a firing range update uh, because many people are using the creator workshop to create their own firing ranges then there will be a player progression system reintroduced this was something that was taken away from overwatch one it is how they rewarded people with loot boxes every time you leveled up you got a loot box there will be a new progression system not much has been said what's going to be on that but we will also be seeing the uh, anniversary of overwatch in season six then after we hit season six seven and beyond will include a new tank hero a collaboration event, a control map, a winter event, a new hero mastery mission, Roadhog will get a rework, fan favorite modes will then return to the game, we'll get cinematic debuts, as well as competitive mystery heroes will return as a game mode, we will get a lore codex and a somber rework. So Blizzard does want to put the time into this game, but they did lie to us. So this this was a huge upset, and the and the the creative director uh, for the game came out and said, you know, we knew for a year and a half we were going to cancel it. We didn't tell you. Uh, I'm not here to answer any of your questions. Here's what's coming, and gave us a roadmap. <laughs> Typical Activision Blizzard being toxic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let's yeah, but let's just... but, but yeah. let, let let's just move on now here to a uh, developer who's not as toxic, I would say probably one of the most successful of all time depends on, if, depends on if they're fucking lying to us right which they do <laughs> which they do <laughs> at least these guys have been known to do it uh man i didn't think the overwatch team would have but so we're looking at rockstar right rockstar we're looking at big games from rockstar red dead redemption 2 that's sold over 53 million copies excellent excellent little number for them gta 5 has sold over 180 million copies uh, so, I mean, just gonna keep selling copies till 6 comes out. So, Take-Two Interactive, though, is expecting fiscal year 2025, which runs from April 24 to March 2025, to be a massive period for the company with several big game launches. We have, were actually talking about this earlier today, um, not the three of us, but a couple of us, uh, at, uh, at Trill. You know, uh, we were talking, like, I overheard the conversation, hey, GTA 6 is coming out. What? How do you know? Because because Rockstar said it's going to be a huge year for them starting in April. 
And I'm like, okay, so like, but what? Well, that, I mean, they said it's going to be one of their biggest years ever, so that means GTA 6, right? I'm like, well, no. <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> but it's getting that hype train rolling. I mean, it's when when Take 2 comes out and they're like this is this is going to be probably one of our biggest fiscal years ever. What what do you think? You think GTA 6, right? So, yeah, I think could so. we or, see GTA or... 6? Let me spitball here. Red Dead Redemption Three. GTA Online Two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. Are, are, aren't they? Uh, don't they own Bully? Are we getting Bully Two? Hey. No, it's gonna uh, be G it's gonna be GTA Five Special. Are, are we getting Midnight Club? New Midnight Club game. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, GTA Five with volumetric God rays. Yeah. With <laughs> volumetric God rays. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, uh, I, mean, I mean, this isn't in our leaks and rumors section, but like when when the the studio and company responsible for one of the biggest yeah. franchises out there says we're about to have a huge fiscal year. You start to wonder why, and it narrows it down the stock really down, fast. Boys. Yeah. It's, it, real, it narrows it down really, really fast. Let me go invest right now. Uh, Let me go buy yeah. a couple shares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But so speaking of uh, some other uh, studios and companies that we're looking at, what's uh, what's happening with Ubisoft? Yeah, man. So they're basically going all in with Assassin's Creed. They uh, have recently licensed a series of Assassin's Creed N NFTs, which I'm not a huge fan of NFTs, but the fact that they took this the next step further, they're smart collectibles, which allows you, if you get these NFTs, you can order a physical version of your NFT, which to me sounds fucking dope. Like you can actually have the physical copy of it and instead of like having a digital copy of something that you think is, I don't know, like NFTs blow my mind and a whole thing. We can talk about those this for days. Is, this is literally just called buying a piece of art. Yeah, pretty it much. Comes with a certificate of authenticity. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what the NFT is, I guess. Yeah. So. Will this allow us to fast travel? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, outside of the NFT news, they do plan to increase the number of developers working on the Assassin's Creed because they have six new entries in development already. It's a lot of fucking Assassin's Creed, and these games are usually massive. I know we have Mirage right around the corner. I think we'll probably see that at the end of the year, maybe October -ish is when we will probably see Mirage. So we'll only see. But outside of Ubisoft's Assassin's Creed game, X Defiant got a recently updated and. Um, inhuman here in our chat usually was supposed to be on the show today did drop a tweet um into our discord server and basically this is from mark rubin the uh one of the main big guys working on x defiant and i'm just going to read this really quick it says hey everyone i just want to give you a quick update on what's been going on since the beta i know there have been a lot of questions regarding what we will be releasing and or when is the next test um, there's no specific dates yet, but we have a lot of big things working on in beta. We want to get our server st um, stabilized. Um, they wanted to get the controller lag that they saw in the PS5 fixed, general polish and improvements, and it's a lot of work for a team that's only so big. Um, so where we are now, starting with the PS5 input lag, they identified and fixed the issue, brought to the controller latency down from 60 milliseconds to around 20, which is still honestly pretty bad. Like, they got to get that to me lower especially if you're going to be a competitive shooter that's going to be in the call of duty range you're not going to be able to compete if you can't get your your input uh, latency down so that's going to be really important there um they said so far this has made a huge difference in feels um they think that the 120 hertz for the ps5 and xbox series x will actually be ready sooner than expected which is fucking incredible because having 120 hertz on console for a shooter is going to be really really and they hope it'll be launch yeah launch and because they 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 originally announced they're like hey it's not going to come with 120 hertz we're working on it but now they're like hey we actually might be able to get this out in time so that's awesome that they're putting in that extra work there um they said as for the net code we made a huge progress and feels much better now something is that no matter how much you test internally until it gets out to the real world um so they'll have to test that out later on and then they said i'll and lastly, server stability. There's two things here. One was the server configuration, which they Ben knew about. They just basically, they it was like a last minute bug when they recently did the um, the recent test, the public test. And they said by the end of the test, we wrangled to the server and get them the more stable. But we have to fix the bugs that caused the issue in the first place and have hardened some of our servers to better stand up to issues like this. So there's going to be some more information to come, but that was just a quick update in regards to X Defiant, which I, I don't know if you guys have played it. I got to play it like a long time ago. I had to sign the NDA. Um, I'm allowed to talk about it now. The game was really fun, and it is could be a legitimate Call of Duty competitor if done correctly. And this is going to be a free-to-play game, so that could really, really drive up the, the competition here with Call of Duty, especially being a $70 game for multiplayer. 
that gets barely any content, or they label it as new content, but it's old stuff. Maybe so, the CMA knows something we don't. And yeah, they thought that X Defiant was, you know, obviously gonna be the COD competitor, so COD, you know, clearly won't harm anybody if it's the only shooter out there. Right. Exactly. But um, enough Ubisoft news. We had some really, really big news here from Nvidia because it has me excited because I need to do an upgrade. <laughs> Rogers turned to upgrade too. Rogers, Rogers rubbing his head. I'm kind of shaking it. I'm like, mm. he said that eight gigabytes isn't enough RAM to play video games on computers. So they decided to announce the 4060 series. It'll have the 4060 Ti, the 4060, and the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte. If you want to play it, you can have a 4060 eight gigabyte for three hundred dollars, or you can have the 4060 Ti eight gigabyte for four hundred dollars or for five hundred you can get the 16 gigabyte version of the 4060 honestly if you're gonna buy one of these cards one of the 4060 cards get the 4060 ti 16 gigabyte it's just it's it's just it's a really bad decision to go with an eight gigabyte card the way the industry is going it's it's going to be very difficult um with these cards and they're running at you know 15 teraflops 22 teraflops luckily the 4060 ti 8 gigabyte has av1 encoder it does draw 160 watts so it's, it's a little intensive so make sure that your power supply can support it but these cards are just they're not what we need we just need the 4070s and we need the 4080s and the cards that we've been wanting to buy we just need the supply yeah. and less scalpers yeah this yeah. This, this this was a strategic placement is they needed a card that was affordable because even like the 4070 4080 for whatever card those are they're expensive as fuck they're like a thousand plus and affordable what are you getting right but like yeah. this this, Bare this, minimum. this right but this is setting the benchmark hey you want a more modern card that's going to run your games just fine like me because i need one of these cards because i can't be i keep I can't run the 980 no more as much as I want to. Like, if I want to play newer games, I'm going to have to upgrade, and this is going to be a perfect time for me to get in on, and getting a 4060 Ti might be the way. Yeah, like, uh, don't get me wrong. I, I think it's great, but you need the 16 gig. You need the 16 yeah. gig for a card for modern gaming or just go play on a console at that point. Like, well, it, I hate to be have... that way, but, like, unless you're playing a PC exclusive you're not going to get the content you want to see. Right. It's an unfortunate truth because, you know, your 8 gigabyte, that's not going to future-proof you. You can spend $400 this year and then spend another $400 in two years or a year. Yep. Uh, or you or can you can, this you can you can spend 1000 this year or you can throw 500 this year, get 16 gig, get three, maybe four years out of it before that starts becoming the minimum. Like... You know, it's uh, it's just an odd drop. I feel like somebody walked through the warehouse and they're like, "What is this box?" And they're like, "Oh shit, that was the forty sixth. Okay, hold on." And then they just had to drop them real quick because it doesn't make <laughs> doesn't make too much sense. Like affordability, like one thing, but a three ninety nine card, yeah. eight gigabytes, running one hundred and sixty watts. Yeah, and I think uh, that this also <laughs> comes down to competition. Like they're um, the AMD just released a, a similar card, similar price, a um, couple couple months ago, and they were like we got to have a card that's competitive at this price because people are just going to buy the cheaper card because it makes more sense for their pockets. we got to have a, ca a card in that same competitive pricing. That's yeah, what they but did. I think a lot of people are getting really smart about what they're actually buying when it comes to the video cards. The The last couple yeah. years have really proven, like, you have to look at what you're getting. So, like, cheaper, like, yeah, I, I can put that in there now, but, like like you said, am I going to be buying it again in a year or two versus, you know, spending a little extra money now and being able to get five six seven years out of a video card yeah yeah that's what so, i got out of my last one yeah. and i'm rocking the same one i had three three years ago yeah yeah so we'll definitely see how that pans out but uh scott hogwarts i guess he had a an update or some news i don't know how to not say so this. much an update but a news but like man we had talked about this if 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 this was if the, the, we said this should have been a thing Apparently, the developers who originally were making this game also felt the same way, but it looks like data mining revealed that a morality system did exist in Hogwarts Legacy, uh, but was eventually scrapped. Uh, what that morality system did was, uh, for anybody who doesn't know how that is, you get good boy points or bad boy <laughs> points, uh, and the unforgivable curses would have got you bad boy points. 
So however powerful they are, however good they are, you know, they, that would have got you some bad boy points. You, your morality would have been a little bit more on the dark side. Uh, interesting enough, I mean, I, I, I would have loved that because, you know, they are powerful. They're very, very powerful curses, but if Our you're trying to be a good character, if you're trying to be a good character, guess what you aren't using? Unforgivable yeah. curses because they are unforgivable. Yeah, I'm surprised uh, I didn't. I'm surprised yeah. I scrapped this here. Yeah, yeah. That, that 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 piece of immersion uh, was definitely a little bit missing, uh, but we do see that it did exist at one point. Yeah, because you can just go around and just murder anybody and everybody. Fuck it. <laughs> it would have been sick. <laughs> like, <Voldemort>. yo, <laughs> right. My man's would have been calling Voldemort Tom. Be like, yo, what up, Tom? What did you get? What's up, buddy? A good call. Good call. <laughs> good call, Tom. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. So unfortunate news that that never came to fruition there maybe they'll learn from their mistakes on that but uh fortnite we kind of covered this uh last week i think it was when there was a leak saying hey there might be a ranked mode coming to fortnite well it's confirmed ranked mode has arrived for battle royale and the zero build but not only that they did get a spider-man crossover hence because the new movie is dropping like june 2nd i think it is the new spider into the spider verse or across the spider verse or whatever the hell it is um but come this you get spider-man and miles morales have both arrived in uh in fortnite so that's awesome to see there but uh, Scott, you're a huge Lord of the Rings fan. Obviously, you're buying Golem at fifty dollars day one. Are you going to play the new MMO that was just recently announced here? You know what? I'm gonna. I, that's a that's a hands down. I'm gonna get in it. I'm gonna I'm gonna see how I feel when I get in there. I'm gonna see how it's feeling. I want to see how the mechanics are working. I want to see how it's looking. Uh, but yes, a- absolutely. It's the same. Th- it's the same thing I did for ESO. People were <laughs> like, "Oh, I don't know about ESO." I said, "Fuck you. I'm playing." I played, I played for a bit, and I, you know, I just kind of fell off. Uh, but I still loved it because I loved what it brought to the table. I loved the lore. I loved being there. Yeah. Same thing with World of Warcraft. With uh, you know, it, it really, it really tied everything together. And I'm really hoping that this. I mean, everything's already tied together, but now you get to play it a little bit more. You get to kind of live those world events. I want to see how they work with those. I want to see uh, how they do with make, maybe rec- maybe recurring bosses. I want to see how they do with raid bosses. Like who's that? Like you know, because. Uh, Sauron, I mean, could be your first world end boss, but you know, there, there's so many things that they could do with this, and I'm really interested to see. So you bet your ass, I'm gonna be hopping in there, 100. percent So Roger, I know you played uh, New World, um, which is a recent MMO developed by Amazon Games. Amazon it Games awesome, also developing but, uh, this. But I just I, I want to take a moment when you when we were talking about this is New World. It was a really good really good idea it's a really great sounding game it had a lot to offer but those who were sweats at the game broke the game and then they and they had an unfair advantage and ruined the game for everyone else so it got to the point where you couldn't do anything unless you you know kiss the the ring of everyone who ran the game in the game yeah yeah so do you you think this game will pan out like do you think there'll be more succession because it is a a bigger ip I think if they take lessons learned from New World and say, hey, we fucked our own game, let's not fuck this, there's a really good chance. And also, there's a lot to offer in Lord of the Rings. There's a lot of really cool content that has been written. And if they get access to the full IP, they have so much good. Right, yeah, definitely agree. So, but, speaking of like good content, Power Wash Simulator, guys, I know you guys are super pumped for this. They're getting SpongeBob DLC, guys. They're getting six new maps, and it's coming this summer, 2023. Who, so who's downloading, and you're going to be cleaning SpongeBob's house and Patrick's house and Squidward's house and maybe the Krusty Krab? I mean, I hate to clean my own fucking house, so I ain't doing any <laughs> video game. <laughs> nah, it's yeah. It's like farming simulator. I don't want to make my own garden, so I don't want to fucking farm somebody else's. Right. But I'll grow crops in Minecraft. Don't don't get yeah. me wrong. <laughs> yeah, definitely agree. Um, but yeah, I heard Power Wash Simulator though has been really like um a game that is like um really relaxing. I heard. So only only time would tell. But this is blew up on the news. I mean, it was in all of the Discord channels I'm a part of. Like people were really talking about this. I was like, you know, got to talk about it a little bit. Goof off with SpongeBob DLC for the uh, Power Wash Sim. But um, <laughs> so moving on here though, we got Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight had a two big announcements this week. First off was a random ass thing that came out of nowhere. Was uh, Nicholas Cage is coming to the game as a survivor character and but when it was first announced i was like oh cool maybe he'll play as his new dracula character and he's like the guy like the the monster nope he's playing as himself as a survivor in the game and i was like 
fuck it, okay. <laughs> like, I was really surprised to see that. Um, hey, Nick Cage needs money, okay? He yeah. isn't as successful as you think. <laughs> yeah, so... Well, he's got all that unbearable weight of massive talent. I don't know yeah. what his yeah. problem would be. Yeah. <laughs> so, but the other news regarding Dead by Daylight, so anybody who's, who's a huge fan of this, is they've got two new games on the works. One by Supermassive Games, the other by Midwinter Entertainment. First of which is being uh, is developing a new single-player interactive story game that will offer an intense narrative um, experience filled with powerful life or death choices set within the backdrop of Dead by Daylight. Uh, more information coming later on in 2023. So my guess is this, this is this is exciting. Yeah, this might this sounds like like um, either As Dusk Falls or like The Quarry. Remember when The Quarry dropped earlier in the year? Like those decision-based games, and like they're really going to be life or death, and like maybe they they dropped the, the what, Twitch integration what's... too. What would be really interesting is if we get these sort of serial killer, you know, chasing you down vibes like Amnesia the Dark Descent kind of did that. You know, you had moments where there were things hunting you. So you had to get through whole floors as these things would go through rooms trying to find you. This is Dead by Daylight is really just known for the fact that you it's four people being chased by that one unstoppable power. I'm, I'm excited to see what they can do with single player content now when you don't have to rely on other people yeah I, I could definitely see like or maybe some Resident Evil vibes because there's always that like that one killer that's chasing you like most of the game and you're trying to invade and, and solve puzzles and, and survive and stuff like that so I could see a game working out like that but the other one though by Midwinter Entertainment is developing a new multiplayer versus player um, environment environmental game that will tackle themes of greed and lust for power with teams of up to four players taking on a strange new corner of the entity's realm so this one sounds very really curious i'm wondering like is this going to be how different is it going to be than just dead by daylight you know like what kind of multiplayer experience are we going to get out of this so only time will tell when they follow up and give us more information here but uh man it's time to dive into the og games some of the biggest games hard-hitting games but we're gonna start with tekken 8 some of the core franchises that made video game what it is the cabinet the cabinet kings cabinet. tekken 8 uh had an announcement of its new character the blood talon huarong uh who akira slides if you're any if you're familiar with uh with weeb culture akira <laughs> uh slides onto the stage on his motorbike um, he has appeared in every Tekken game since he was introduced in Tekken 3, and he rivals uh, Jin uh, Kazama playing across the series. So we, we get a confirmation that a core character has been re-added to the game or will continue to be in the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And then also just a quick reminder, there is no official release date yet, so I'm wondering if we'll get the official release date at the upcoming events, whether it's PlayStation, Xbox, Summer Games Fest, mm -hmm. IGN's event. Like, there's a ton of I, events coming out. I could see it coming out most like maybe maybe PlayStation, I'm thinking. Summer Games. It's Summer Games, yeah. 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 Or or what, what, what if we get Tekken 8 from that showcases at the Xbox one, but Mortal Kombat 1, which we're about to talk about here in a second, debuts on PlayStation stage. So we'll, we'll, it'll be interesting That's... to see, like, the competition there, which one has the marketing rights over one or the other. But um, speaking about Mortal Kombat 1, Scott, I know you're really pumped for this one here. Yes. So, Mortal Kombat 1, the remake, going back from the pseudo beginning. I use that in quotes. Uh, so, they're officially announced the release. Uh, it's going to be September 18th, 2023. It's going to be PS5, Series X and S, Switch, and PC. We're looking at a new fighting system, new game modes, new finishers, new all of it, right? We get cross-play, we get cross-progression. We got that out of the way. Who's seen this trailer? It looks so sick. I am excited. It, it is it, it absolutely looks really good. Now, <laughs> mind you, it was all cinematic and not gameplay. So, but Mortal Kombat has always looked crisp and clean. Whether it's on the Xbox, the Xbox 360, PlayStation, it's always looked good. Exactly. I, I'm so pumped to see how this is gonna be. The new storyline is gonna be following a new. Re oh, shoot, sorry, I'm just really excited. Uh, a new reborn universe where you have the fire god, Liu Kang. Uh, that is awesome. Immediately, yes, yes, Inhuman. It is absolutely bananas. So uh, we we're looking at it here, like it. it obviously, it, it's a it is a cinematic. So 
fucking beautiful. It is, it is amazing. Um, and so there's actually two versions of this trailer, and one of my one of my friends was watching the trailer that didn't have the end. It just ended with the red circle, and that was it. You didn't see anything else. You didn't end. I was like, no, 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 wrong trailer, my guy. And Watch we pulled it up. <laughs> I was like, here's here's the trailer. Here's the Mortal Kombat trailer. <laughs> uh, this is Mortal yeah, Kombat. <laughs> This is it. And it's like, it's funny because, like, when you have Liu Kang's, like, voiceover, you're like, okay, cool. Like, maybe this is hopeful. Maybe this is going to be something else. Like, we'll see how it goes. If it's going to be, you know, every, you know, the storyline brings everybody together. Doesn't look like it uh, towards the end. But I think that's also, you know, he, he talks a lot about choice in this. So it, I, I'm not sure exactly how everything's going to end up in that way. Um, but you know, there's your boy Shang Tsung, oh. uh, and that was that was where the oh no, there it is, there it is, oh. and there, oh and my God. there, and <laughs> yeah, the Gregor Clegane, <laughs> the, the, like absolutely insane. And when when I saw Liu Kang do this as the Fire God, this was when I was like, this is it, this is absolutely just this piece here, and just. Mm. Oh, uh, pulls his just, skull straight just, down through just, him, dude. Just goes. Oh. <laughs> like, so this is what you come to expect from a Mortal Kombat game. It's it's violent. It's fun. It's still gonna have that good storyline that we want. But like, we're really, you know, why we're here. And they've like, already announced cool characters too. Yeah, they have. So, well, uh, announce. <laughs> yeah. So you're de- like they're already putting out. They're already putting out and talking about DLCs. So DLC pack number one, you're going to have your new playable characters and then you're going to have your cameo characters, which Mortal Kombat has become so well known for over the past couple years. So your in- your immediate playable characters with DLC pack number one is going to be Quan Chi, Omni-Man, Ermac, Peacekeeper, Takeda, and Homelander. So that's going to be super fun. Uh, and then you get your cameo characters. You get Tremor, Johnny Cage, Chameleon, Mavado, and Farrah. So like, already these are nuts. nuts. <laughs> just that that bench coming off. The, the just mm. the bench coming off of like the first wave of DLC. Like they are going hard at this remake. Yeah, and D- Disney Princess hits it right here. The movie that recently just came out was really good, and you're going to just ride that wave of how good that movie was and the introduction because this <laughs> this game this game's been around for a long time. We haven't had a new Mortal Kombat in a little while. But like yeah, the hype is just going to build there, and it's going to continue. I rewatched that movie like two and a half weeks ago because I was like, man, it's been a while since I watched this new Mortal Kombat. And I watched it, I'm like, this holds up. This is amazing. This is brutal. It was fun, and, and it's, it was like it was so good. It's and, and I I expect nothing but it was it was campy. Out of this. It was campy as hell. Like it just it, yeah. it, it, it it was everything. It had everything. It had everything you needed for just like the. The yeah. perfect Mortal Kombat movie, like it really, really did. I, I still say Kano stole that entire thing, but mm-hmm. debatable for for another time. <laughs> uh, but man, like I am, I am insanely excited for this game. Uh, that was a huge part of me growing up, like late nights with the boys playing Mortal Kombat after work, like you know, uh, f- late Friday nights doing Mortal Kombat tournaments in house. Like, no, you lost. Give up your, give up your sticks. Like <laughs> next guy comes in, like almost like, almost like fist fights sometimes like pe- people holding the block button the whole time, which, you know, other people argue is a legitimate strategy, but, <laughs> and, and, you know, just, but, but man, just like how hype I am for this game and what this game means to me, just like as growing up playing this game so much, I am, insanely pumped for this and i can't wait to see how this comes out yeah for sure yeah definitely going to be really excited to see and obviously well, i'm pretty sure we'll maybe even see some gameplay over the next couple of weeks here at all the the game showcases but the round out here though we got three more um gaming news here before we round out with our leaks and rumors uh layers layers of fear which is like a reboot kind of um being made by bluebird team got the official release date for june 15th of 2023 i was going to show the trailer but we're going to cut it short there um but so that's really exciting it's a classic horror game that's that's returning and it, it looks really good so far but um, there's a new announcement too, Roger. What's going on with yeah. uh, Telltale? So Telltale, we had an announcement that the Expanse was going to be getting a Telltale release. We finally got the launch date. It is 
actually around the corner. It is July 27th when we're going to get the first episode. So if you've watched The Expanse and want to play the 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 gameplay version, that will be releasing in two months. Yeah, that's actually pretty exciting. This has been a show that I wanted to check out. Yeah. Because um, it's like that sci-fi. Um, and it's, a- it's a five-part series. And each episode, you only have to wait two weeks. So you will be able to play the entire game in ten weeks. And this is on Prime Video, and I think you can actually watch it on Apple TV now as well. Yep. So that that's pretty mm-hmm. dope. So, yeah, definitely be on the lookout for that. And then to round out our gaming news, though, Arc Raiders, which had some interesting news here because they, they're transitioning to a PvPVE extraction shooter. Um, it's a it's entering um, you know, closed alpha signups are now live and this is from the same studio that recently released the finals which was like that crazy destructive like first person shooter game um that that took the the gaming industry by storm there for a little bit because that game's not officially out out either so but there was just a new update in regards to Mm -hmm. uh arc raiders which looks pretty cool but yeah that's all of our gaming news that we got for this week so let's move on to our gaming uh leaks and rumors So, obviously, I'm going to kick it off here with our Xbox um, leaks and rumors. Uh, it says rumor that Microsoft is not going to stick to the 12-month window for the Xbox Game Showcase of 2023, which I'm actually excited for because when you when you limit the showcase to only going to show you what's coming out over the next 12 months, kind of sucks because you don't get to see what's the future of Xbox, what's the future of games coming out. So we're gonna, yeah. so we're, we're, we're getting that return of, oh man, I get to be excited for, for Elder Scrolls 7 that's coming out in 2040. I'm super excited for that one. You know, like we're going to get stuff like that again. Um, but the interesting part here is some of the other leaks here is Persona 3 Remake, which we've been covering for a long time now, is apparently going to be revealed here at the Xbox Showcase, which is going to be huge because if they're trying to capture that Japanese market, if they say the Persona 3 Remake is coming out, I don't know, this year, next year, whatever, and it's coming to Game Pass Day 1, you're going to drive a lot more people to come to your console to, to, or mm-hmm. the subscription service. Not only that, though, the game Scalebound that was scrapped a few years back during the Xbox One year is apparently being revived and is going to be revealed um, via the showcase. Because this actually was funny because uh, Inhuman tweet, sent this tweet over to me. Because this came from a very known guy, part of the gaming industry, known as Cliff Blazinski, and he was drunk tweeting. And he basically all but said, hey guys, this is happening at the showcase. So take that with a grain of salt, but Scalebound has been in and out of the news lately, and it'd be awesome to see this actually be revived because this game looked like it could have been really well. Xbox was just going through a tough, tough time when they decided to scrap this, so we'll, we'll see. But Roger, PlayStation had a massive leak that I wonder if it to be true because this could be huge. Dude. These guys need a diaper because they leak in all over the place, dude. They uh, The full list of their showcase may have been leaked. We have a list of 24 fucking games that should be showcased this week. Like, holy crap, dude. Your That's... whole list is out there. And it's 24 individual shits that somebody just took. Yeah. Right so, there. <laughs> I'm going to rapid fire here. We've got The Last of Us has a new installment called Factions. We kind of seen this in The Last of Us gameplay. Potentially, this is a multiplayer game. It's going to be a, a, a take from The Last of Us 2 multiplayer, but making it its, its own standalone. We've got Twisted Metal, the reboot, potentially. We've got Pragmata. Pragmata, yes. Mm-hmm. We've got Resident Evil 4 getting its VR release. We've got Snake Eater subsequent. We've got Silent Hill 2, the remake. We've got Mortal Kombat 1, Final Fantasy 7, the next installment, Rebirth. We've got potentially Disney's new fighting game that will now replace multiverses <laughs> called Disney Domination. We've got Astro's Conquest, which is taking our character Astro from his lab on the PS5 demo demo app. Ast- Astro's uh, Playroom. Yep. We've got Half-Life Alex potentially coming to PSVR. We've got Death Stranding 2. We've got Stellar Blade, Hades 2, Darkest Dungeon 2, Goodbye Volcano High. We've got the Dishwasher Collection, Ghost of a Tale 2, Lost Soul Aside, Killzone, Ghost of Kamakura. We've got Helldivers 2, Marvel Spider-Man 2. We may actually just see a shadow drop two weeks from now 
Spider-Man comes out. We still haven't seen a release date, but it's supposed to come out this year. So when are we getting it? And then lastly, we have Dark Side on the list. There are so many different titles and some were like, what are these games? <laughs> we're truly got a mixed bag here. Yeah. I mean, Killzone, like if they bring back Killzone, that'll be huge. And then like Ghost of Kamakara, I assume like that'll be like a spiritual sequel to Ghost of Tsushima. That that would be my guess is there. Um, but yeah, Spider-Man 2, that's going to be exciting. But yeah, this this list is fucking insane. Twisted Metal has to happen. I mean, it makes it sense. The, the movie to. or TV I, show just was recently. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it, like it, it, I, I'm just so hype off this. I list. mean, but we're talking about PlayStation like, here, and they're they've been really great at fumbling the bag lately. So hopefully they don't fuck that up. <laughs> yeah. You're thinking yeah. correctly. That's the PlayStation way, my friend. That yeah. is the way. But. Let's uh, round out the last few topics here before the show ends. Disney Domination. So this was, as we know, kind of leaked by PlayStation. Disney Domination is a Smash Bros. killer or the multiverse's successor that <laughs> Warner Brothers has now pulled because it was in beta <laughs> that people paid to play. Smash Bros. killer, they said. There will be 55 characters at launch spread across single-player campaign that features 60 stages. There will be so many online modes, and we say that in air quotes, mm -hmm. including 12-player online battles, voice chat battles. <laughs> there will be Disney Dominion missions and more. What could these be? We don't fucking know. But <laughs> Disney may have something interesting for us. It will boast a unique art style that looks like something out of Unreal Engine 5, they said, and it's supposed to be edgy. <laughs> and when you say edgy, yeah. <laughs> then you've lost all credibility. Reportedly, it's being developed by Square Enix, but it's not confirmed, so we don't know who. But it's been in dev for five years with a AAA budget. It is a 2D platformer, single-player campaign. There will be 70 in-game items like Smash Bros. has, and there will also be voice chat for shit-talking. You imagine the shit-talking? going to be so toxic. I'm like, I'm already picturing, like, you know how you had Duck Hunt, the, the Duck Hunt duo? I'm expecting the same thing, but with, like, the fox and the hound, and I'm just going to make people so upset. <laughs> I'm just gonna hurt everybody. My man's gonna just get mad at Hercules running around that road rage motherfucker. <laughs> Elsa's like, yeah, Elsa's a low key bad. god. This is yeah. gonna be fantastic, dude. Yeah, that's Damn, that's wait. funny. Yeah, so oh. that that game actually sounds interesting to me. I mean Disney has a lot I mean, of IPs to pull from as well, so I'm saying if Elsa doesn't just like fucking freeze somebody and Mortal Kombat finish them, the game's not worth it. Yeah. So Disney, Disney and Star said, Wars and uh, Marvel, like there's so much. <laughs> Disney Dude, said I didn't this. Even uh, think about Star Wars. It sounds oddly adult. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. Han Solo is your Star Fox character. That'd be well, sweet. no, no, no. Uh, the game title is Disney Domination. That's what she decided to say. No, that yeah, she said this sounds yeah. oddly adult, and I was like, "Don't king shame me." Uh, <laughs> she said it doesn't sound kid friendly so much, but you know what? You know how I was talking earlier about things that might have been like aimed at kids, but are really for the adults. This one's for the adults. Fuck them kids. <laughs> Fuck them kids. <laughs> Fuck yeah. them kids. Because so, I'm, I'm gonna just be so toxic in this. I can't wait. So, what's up next, Scott? Yeah, speaking of toxic, so Cyberpunk 2077, uh, <laughs> we're looking at a possible June release for the Phantom Liberty DLC. Uh, this was coming off of a leak. Uh, we're thinking that it's probably, maybe, most likely going to get shadow dropped at the uh, Summer Games Fest on the 8th of June. That what, would are be we, insane. what are we it's thinking? Ready that day. Like, hey, yeah, it's it's just, here it if is. you didn't know, it's out. <laughs> yeah, by the way, when you guys are done here, go home and download Phantom Liberty. Yeah, I'm fucking excited see for this. They, this will be like one of the first have... DLCs that I buy and play for the first time in forever. See if they still have any of the same old bugs. Who knows? Right. But um, yeah, so another weird one. We talked about this a little bit ago with uh, with the EA stuff, but Saudi Arabia and EA. Uh, so Saudi Arabia had reportedly increased their stake in EA up to 9%. Looks like uh, EA isn't doing any female sports games anymore. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> women's soccer is out. Uh, looks like any, yeah, that's kind of kind of weird. So we'll we'll see what happened there, but yeah, rip yeah. in case. Yeah, we'll see how that because I mean Saudi Arabia's just been investing 
tons of money it's into the, the gaming industry. It's the future entertainment. Yeah, they understand. Entertainment. They understand. They understand how big that that part yeah, of the economy is. Yeah, they want to be. They want to be a big name in gaming so bad. Yeah. So we'll the see. thing like, is, like, really they're do. so repressed. And they're such a backwards culture. And they're like, let's get involved in the precipice, the pinnacle of culture. Yeah. Uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see how they really do impact the <laughs> industry. trying to be the, by the COD team LA Gorillas. <laughs> yeah. Um, but to round out our uh, leaks and rumors, because this one came out of nowhere, and it was like a oops kind of thing here. The voice actor, mm. Matthew Porters, um, or Paretas or Pareta, it's fucking spell checked here. Um, revealed on a podcast by accident, saying the game should be releasing in October. Because he was like, "Yeah, you know, I've been working on this game at uh, it's called Alan Wake, and it should be out in October." And he was like, "Shit!" <laughs> like, <laughs> Oops. yeah. So it was like, "Okay, Alan Wake two on the way." So I'm fucking pumped. We uh, obviously Inhuman was a big fan of Remedy games. Well, we talked about oh. Control, the Alan Wake games, Quantum Break, like the next. Remedy game is here. Alan Wake 2 is on the way, potentially in October 2023. Happy birthday to me and Roger, because we're going to be playing Alan Wake 2. I'm October 2. Oh, fuck. Get the October babies. We all October. I think it was our first first episode with Inhuman in here when we were talking about the Alan Wake just series and how good it was. And then when this Alan Wake dump happened, I was just like... (laughs) <laughs> like it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. You, easy. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do that. <laughs> yeah. Move your birthday to us. And yeah. All four of us will celebrate by uh, by by streaming or co-streaming. Alan Wake Two. Alan Wake Two. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be awesome. Maybe we'll see uh, an official announcement here with the upcoming game game events here. But hey, guys, that's all of our leaks, rumors, news, everything we got for you. So we want to thank everyone who did stick around for this really long episode who checked us out live on Twitch. Anyone does check us out later on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. I promise I will have it up on time this this, this go around. Uh, I dropped the bag here. Just so much going on in my life. So we definitely want to do thank you for checking us out, though. But uh, Roger, where can the community find you at? Drop the bag. That's not the turn of phrase. Uh, I, I fumbled the bag. I dropped the bag. I fumbled. I, fumbled oh, I folded. Right. If you want to find me, I'm at twitch.tv slash lunatic underscore oblivion. <laughs> and Scott, where can the community find you at? You can find me on twitch.tv forward slash scoby1 discord scoby1. My numbers are 9369, although that might be changing with the discord update here soon. Battle.net scoby1 11780 and Instagram scoby1. And of course, guys, check me over at Twitter at Mr. Never Chillin underscore Xbox is X Never Space Chillin. We'll catch some dubs in Warzone, slide in there. Facebook, Vic Rubacher, if you want to come on the show or anything else, got any questions or concerns. And I'm streaming over on my Twitch at Mr. Never Chillin. So come through, check out all of my single player uh, playthroughs of all the upcoming games that'll be coming out. So we want to thank everyone again. But until next time, peace. <laughs>